Hello everyone, this is HTS Guest here back with some more Bronze League Heroes! That one took a lot out of me. That was a musical performance at its finest. That's right, we are here to cast the very best of the very worst here at Bronze League Heroes. We like to have a lot of fun, uh, we like to laugh a lot, and we like to realize, you know what, it doesn't matter how good or bad at StarCraft you are, you should always play at least one game a day because one game a day keeps the BM away. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. But anyways, uh, let's introduce our players down in the bottom right side. Give it up for Mr. Xander. Why he has the word Mr. in front of his name now is actually beyond me. And up in the top left side. It is someone named after the old StarCraft League that no longer exists. Give it up for the MSL. I love how it's now Mr. Xander and the MSL. It's not their actual names, though. But uh, either way, it is time for the Bronze League Heroes. We are on the map that is super de duperty large. I don't know if that actually makes a difference for Bronze League Heroes or not, but we should have a good laugh regardless. Now, normally in a regular game, I would be talking about how uh, there's lots of strategy, the map can be cut in half very easily, there's lots of easy to secure bases, but let's be honest, none of that is going to play a role here today. Uh, I'm trying to think of what we can talk about really quickly. As this game is getting underway, I keep smacking my lips a lot, which uh, is definitely an annoying noise. Definitely an annoying noise. I'm trying to think. I, I usually, I, I pre-plan something. I'd be like, hey, guys, let's talk about it, because I already uploaded the video about the patch changes. Uh, I've already uploaded a lot of StarCraft II games. I got some more Terran games, so we got our bases covered there. I've already uploaded the update video for the Jaeger, uh, which was really cool. And apparently you guys really liked it. By the way, that uh, behind the scenes video where we're building the Jaeger robots, you your response was so positive that I've already started another project with Greg at the barnyard. And this is a project that is tied into the super secret project. Oh yes, baby, we got something. Two pilots. <laughs> I love how it's two pylons. Why is it two pylons? All right, we got the double gateway. Oh, no, the probe is trapped. The probe is trapped, so it's got to be a uh, double gateway here. Oh, he has to cancel it. Don't you guys hate when that happens, when you have, like, the most go-to build plan, and then your probe gets stuck, and it just sh it's like shooting yourself right in the foot. But either way, we're going to have the ballsy two-gate and a forge build, keeping in mind that uh, his forge should already be done with cannons already on the way. Uh-oh, the Overlord. The Overlord's going to barely miss it here, so all this shenanigans is going on in a location that he has not seen. Oh, my God, so close to being spotted. I mean, look, look how lucky this pylon is, man, just right there. Just barely out of vision. Oh, God, that spawning pool only has slightly better vision. All right, so we have the double gate and the forge. Got to be on the way. Oh, no, you're going to put the pylon. Are the cannon way too far forward? All right, so this is actually got to be spotted. I think we already have Zerglings on the field, don't we? Yeah, we do. We got four Lings already. So those Lings are going to be able to run up here. Now, this build would have been sweet if he would have built a first cannon back here and then a cannon here. But unfortunately for him, this is Bronze League Heroes. So pro tip of the day. <laughs> Maybe, maybe work on the on the build order a little bit. All right, so we do have the probe here. No, the probe gets taken out. Zealot is here. Cannon will complete. Not sure if it's going to be able to do all that with jams. Zealot's like, my life for ire. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's going to be some Bronze League hero Zealots. We all know how bad and yet how good they really are. Like this, uh, my life for ire as he runs all the way across the base to try and take on everybody. That, of course, did not end up so well for him. Four kills on this cannon, soon to be five. My life for Iron, says Zealot number two. We'll see if we can actually hang on right here. Looks like the cannon actually raking in kills right now. Uh, nine kills on the cannon, plus the Zealot himself has three, so not bad at all. Looks like the Overlord. That's the Overlord trying to save my life for Iron. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's so stupid. Oh, hey, at least I cracked myself up, all right? So it looks like this has got a track of a spike bolt. This is actually going to be a lot of links up here. This might be enough to overwhelm the forces. It is just like cool quip. Oh, no, the probe arrives at the absolute wrong time. This is not a good time to be a probe. He's got to try and drop the cannons and ah! not able to protect himself there with a cannon wall. So this, uh, this rush is going to be... Uh, cleaned up, it looks like. Uh, still making Zelda. He's still got 700 mils. That includes his ninja expansion, which is just chilling out over here. Not even making any probes yet. He does have it selected, but 
is not uh, is not currently using it. There he goes. He's got two probes on the way and set the rally point. Very nice. Very nice. It's, uh, this rush cheese, whatever you want to call it, is going to get cleaned up. Ah, the zealot right there was literally stepping out of the warp end. Uh, this zealot, not a good place to spawn. Get out of there, zealot, while you still can. Oh, he's going to go for the queen. Ask her out on a date. You know, he's very abusive. She said no. And no means no. Oh, my God. Can this zealot actually kill it off? That would be hilarious. Oh, my God. Can the zealot do it? Can he do it? No, it's not going to happen. It is not going to happen as much as that. Wait, where are you going, Queen? Oh, my God. Is he going to get Is he going to get Oh, so close. Oh, not yet. All right. All right. A little bit of excitement there. And the queens do give each other some love hugs. So uh, now the game is settled down a little bit. Everyone can relax. Uh, Xander, though, does have three bases. He is going up to three bases at the eight-minute mark. A bold move indeed, and he should have cannons on the way, which he does. I think he's fully walled in. Kind of hard to tell sometimes without that build grid. I think he's fully walled in. Maybe he's at, I don't know if Zerglings can slip through there or not. But regardless, he should be relatively safe from the links because they do not have Zergling speed. We have cannons on the way, so should be just fine there. We do have the Overlord kind of hanging out in the main base. He notices that there's no gas. Or, or did he notice? I, 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 a pro gamer would notice. But again, this is Bronze League Heroes. So the Overlord sees it. But you have to remember that units in Bronze League Heroes are kind of like the, the, the guys fresh out of the academy. Like the Overlord may not realize that he has to tell MSL that there's no gas being collected. But I got to say, man, Xander is going to be balls rich right now. He's got three cannons about, uh, actually they are done with the Cybernetic Core on the way. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any gas to actually use the Cybernetic Core. So that is that. That's like buying, like saving up for two years to buy the awesome SUV that you wanted spending every dollar and then not being able to fill it with gas. That is exactly what happens here. He doesn't have any Vespine gas right now. And a 10 drone is going to be on the way for Mr. MSL. MSL has taken a substantial lead here. I think that that is uh, something that's important to mention is that the uh, who would have thought that, that that build didn't go, hey, look at that, 1987. That was the best year ever, by the way. 1987 right there is the amount of resources that have been lost. And uh, Lair Tech is going to be on the way. So we'll see exactly what MSL has planned here. He actually has a lot of workers here. Uh, 20 there and 16 at his main base. So saturation is not bad. Could be a little bit more even, but uh, 42 drones on the field. The third base up here, though, is completely hidden. Our Protoss finally going to be getting gas. Starts his uh, warp gate research. Is actually going to chrono boost that out as well. I also love how Xander's only hotkeys are his Nexus. And really, as Protoss, what do you need other than Chrono Boost? I can't think of a single hotkey. So he has all three Nexus hotkey. That's good for him. Let's take a look at our Zerg player. He actually has his Lynx hotkey and a random Overlord. Which Overlord is the lucky Overlord? The one down here. Look at you. You get your own little hotkey. Aren't you cute? And also has his two Hatcheries hotkey as well. Now, I'm actually curious. What hotkeys do you guys use? What, what numbers do you hotkey everything to? Because I always hotkey my army to one and my nexus to two. I'm trying to break that habit, but it's just so easy to hit two chrono boosts, two chrono boosts. I'm trying to get better about it, though. So uh, we'll see, because that it makes micro and high templar quite difficult, because I set them to, like, three, then I set my robo to four, then my observer's, like, five. It's really, I got to work on it. My hotkeys are not looking too hot. But regardless, we do have Stargates on the way. I gotta say, I love Double Stargate. Even if it's not that great anymore, people are figuring out how to deal with it. I still love it. That's okay. I love it. Oh my god, I think we're gonna be having a Nidus Worm over here. Xander gonna be working on his gateways. These aren't gonna be in time, though. The Overlord can spot this Nidus Worm BT dubs. So we'll have to see if that does indeed go down. He has the money. He has the worm, and he has this, the, the, the good spot to throw it down. It's actually going to be right here. So we'll see. Oh, there it is, baby. Nidus worm on the way there. Remember, that alert that it gives us is not – they don't see that in game. So it looks like it's going to be returning the favor by building in his base. He thinks he's safe. He does have lots of money. Hopefully for him, he's mining more gas. Ah, he's not mining off this one. That's going to be bad news. He only has one probe on that one. <laughs> So that is bad news as well. Uh oh, the probe spots it, but a second too late. He realizes that, uh oh, there is a nice worm here. And all of a sudden, the main base is going to be besieged. Xander says, really? Question mark. Uh, we'll see exactly what he says here. He, he wants to be microing here and not typing. Warp gates, though, will allow him to uh, get in some additional units before these actually go down. But it does look like the main base will fall. And the cannon on the low ground actually going to be raking in these kills here on those lings, at least getting free. With that army, you had to use a warp. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, here we go. The smack talk has begun. Nice cheese, buddy. All right. So Xander smack talk. He's saying, really? 
Really, Mom? You have to use a warm? And uh, MSL says, nice cheese, buddy. Xander says, wasn't cheese. Uh, I mean, I guess, I guess we could call it not cheese. We can go with that. We do have the Void Rays, though. Now, the thing is, is he is behind in supply. He is about to lose his natural. He's already lost his main. But, but he has Void Rays. Now, remember the thing about Bronze League Heroes is that players don't spend money. So you can see about 25 minerals. <laughs> 2,500 minerals. 2,500 minerals there apiece. Bailey's got to try and roll in. Might actually do some decent damage with these. No, he went for the forge. That didn't quite work out, which means these three cans got to be able to clean up a lot of these links. The Roach is for sure, though, no matter how bad his micro is, is going to be able to clean these up. So that is going to be it for the natural. These poor probes, your, your time is near. More pylons are on the way. I think these are just to buy himself some time, in all honesty. Looks like the Link right there going to be running in the middle line as well. Be able to take out all of those probes. Bane Link's got to be more behind. Now, the real question is, is do the Bane Links hit the buildings? Because that would be hilarious. No, I don't think they will indeed hit that. And uh, really don't. Oh, no, he's going to use them on the buildings. Stop. Stop. What have you done? That's such a waste of money. Yellow, young money, throws away those Bane Links. Oh, God, I can't believe I just said that. That was... That was bad. Uh, he does have like one pylon powering these two stargates. Now the fun thing is, is that Xander could throw down like 20 gateways and make like 150 zealots. Look guys, the math checks out, okay? Anyways, he has a lot of money in the bank. So does our Zerg player though. He's finally going to be expanding to his third base at the 15 minute mark. Pro tip of the day! For Zerg, if you are ahead, you should be on like four or five bases right now. Definitely don't want to be taking your third at the 15, 16 minute mark after you've killed your opponent. And remember, guys, good habits. Always practice the good habits. Even if you're super far ahead, do not slack ever. You will end up losing games, which is actually what we might be seeing right, happening right now. Because, oh, God, that one Baneling, he's like, please, please. I, I You know, three days with the Roaches, they still don't know I'm a Baneling. And hopefully for him, he continue being a Baneling. Ever notice that these guys just waddle so cutely? I mean, look at that. Have we ever taken a second just to recognize how freaking adorable the roach actually is when he's waddling around? I feel like this should be on R slash or AW just because, I don't know, maybe I just play too much uh, too much StarCraft. But we do have lots of Void Rays out now, are out now, and you know, if there's one unit that can destroy Bronze League level uh, players, it is the Dark Templar. If there's another unit that can do it, it's the Oracle. But third, third in the list is going to be the Void Ray. They are at the top of the ramp as well. They could activate that prismatic alignment and take out a lot of these roaches. We'll see if he actually manages to do that or not. The roach is right there. Oh, God. I also love how MSL scouted everywhere except the top right. And now he's got the greeting party over here. The Void Rays. Oh, God. They killed the Baneling. The Void Rays ready to dance. And uh, we'll be able to force these roaches all the way home. I think that's going to activate Xander here and make him realize, yeah, I should probably go ahead and attack with these. Oh, one Void Ray barely in range. The Roach trying to get away. And nope, he explodes. His Gibbs go everywhere. The Void Rays, though, should probably go for the kill, not necessarily for killing off the units because Mutalisks could be on the way. Spore Caller's on the way, though. We do have Corruptors going to be happening out. So can Xander do the impossible? Can he defeat the coveted Warm build? It's very tough to do. Uh, only the cheesy Zerg players use it. But then again, Xander is confident that building his entire base and his opponent is not cheesy. So I'm actually not sure who I'm cheering for at this point. We will see the Void Rays uh, actually move in here. We'll be able to focus out. The Queen's like, don't worry, I'll inject you. Uh, could spam the transfuses here as well. These Queens have full energy. That's not going to happen, though. And the Void Rays here, they do take out the Hatcher. They do take out the Queens. The Queen's able to do more damage than they really should have. Overlord's like, hey, guys, what's going on? As he explodes all over the place. So that base got taken out. Uh, one Corruptor on the way. I mean, honestly, Corruptors are a terrible choice right now. Overlord's there trying to absorb some of the damage. Not really going to happen, though. Where's the Prismatic alignment? There it is. That's just going to roast right through those Corruptors, especially if he doesn't actually ma uh, back them up. It does look like one Voider over here trying to hold the line. The probes do get taken out. Those are trying to fight the links here. Uh, does he actually act? Oh, God, he's going to leave his base here. He's going to let it die. Uh, I don't know what he's actually going to do there, but the Voider is now going to be killing off tons of drones. And that natural is dead. The main base is now going to die. Don't kill the overlords, buddy. You got to go for the bases. Got to go for the bases. And also, one thing I find hilarious in Bronze League hero games. Oh, wait, you can keep making probes. Make the probes. Make the probes. Make, make, go make the probes. Let's see if he actually makes any during this. 
I have a feeling that his APM is just skyrocketing here. He is he is rocking that 50 APM to try and micro these Void Rays to his heart's content. And he will be able to take down the lair relatively quickly. He'll also be able to kill off all the drones. Now, again, the thing that's hilarious about Bronze League Heroes to me every time is that when it becomes in these base race situations, uh, everyone has so much money that they just build things all over the map. So we can see that uh, mass drones may be moving out. There goes three right there. And uh, can really start to... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, is this going to happen? Wait, wait, so you can start building those hatcheries every which way. Void Race here should probably activate their prismatic alignment. They don't know where that button is, though, so got to be able to take out uh, one of the Corruptors. Uh, who actually wins this battle? I think the Corruptors end up winning, especially that Corruption ability being used. The Void Race inside the main base are going to town on those buildings, and oh, so close. So close there. The Corruptors there just going to be chilling out while the Zerglings kind of ramsack. Ramsack? Is that the word? I think that's the word, right? We're, we're going to go with the word, the word Ramsack. Ramsack the main base. And, uh-oh, uh-oh, score cars are done, but Prismatic Alignment's pretty good. Got to be focusing these down, as it does look like, you know, the 45 Dangerous Biological does not quite help out when you are shooting Void Rays. And the Void Ray barely survives there. And it looks like, you know, why do we have so many good base races in a Bronze League Heroes? I still am not sure who's actually going to win this, because, again, the, the army supply for our Protoss is uh, 16 to 20 which may seem like a favorite Zerg, but Zerg basically has no anti-air. If we take a look here at the units tab, it is four Void Rays versus three Corruptors, 29 links. Void Rays here trying to take out all the tech. Really what the Void Rays needed to do was save a base. Actually, this game could be really cool if the Void Rays actually back up to here and, uh, and just defend that base. So we'll see if that can actually happen or not. I'm actually curious to see who would win that. But for now, it does look at the Void Ray is going to be moving out here to try and take out the hatchery. And Xander's like, what is cheese? I don't even, I don't even know what that means. Oh, the Void Ray here should be able to take out the rest, the rest of the Corruptors here. So at this point, all Xander has to do... Oh, he doesn't have any money. Ooh. Ooh, because he built so many pylons. What's up with all the pylons? Uh, he built all his pylons, so now he can't build any cannons down there, so the Ling's going to be moving out. Oh, God, I think Xander, uh, he was winning the game, then he threw it away, then he was winning again with the Void Rays. I think he threw it away again. This is just a roller coaster for Xander, man, and MSL is just going through the motions, I feel like. But it does look like in the top right, that base has been cleaned out. The Void Rays still cleaning up all of these... Uh, all the extractors, but at the same time, the Void Rays are completely out of position. I mean, just look at this map for a second. What the hell is going on here? And also, where the hell is that probe? Uh, probe, what are you doing? You got a mine, buddy. You have to build money to buy friends. It's just like real life. Wait, wait, I did that wrong. You have to get money to build friends. You have to get money to buy friends. Did I say that right? It's like real life, guys. Whatever. The more money you have, the more probe friends you have. I don't know, but it looks like the Lynx right now going to be moving to the space. Oh, no. Xander may be throwing this game away. I I would say that there was a bet out there for him to throw this game, but uh, I, don't, I don't think there's money on the line for this episode. I'm going to be completely honest. It does look like the Lynx here. Got to be able to clean out this base. The Void Ray is trying to do as much damage as they can. The last Corruptor going to get taken out. The Void Ray over here going to be able to kill off a base. The Void Ray is trying to get back in time to save the Nexus. I think there's only one Void Ray here, though, which isn't going to be enough to save the Nexus. I think it's actually the last building here. The Void Ray is trying to build down. Uh, burn down the last building. Oh, no. Is that it? Ah, no. He still has another pylon. Oh, God. My, my voice could not take too much more of this. As the Zerglings are trying to spot the last building. Keep in mind, though, that as soon as that Nexus uh, dies, which it just did, that pylon will be revealed so it is now or never for the void rays to make something happen they're going to be going for the buildings we have an idle void ray what are you doing what are you doing are you a bronze league hero zealot i feel like you are and unfortunately that guy's not going to be able to kill off the last remaining buildings down here the lings are on the hunt they are constantly looking around for new buildings and it does look like the uh the nice room will go down that does count as a building i believe uh, yes, it does. I cast a game one time where Nidus Worm ended up winning it, but it does look like uh, all the buildings are going to go down, but guess what? The pylon has been revealed! The pylon has been revealed! He knows exactly where it's at! He knows how to use his minimap, which means he should be promoted to Silver League, let's be honest. But it looks like the last pylon may go down. This should be the absolute last building here. There's only one evolution chamber done, and there it is! Oh god, MSL was victorious! This game is going to kill me. My friend Sinvicta is the one who uh, finds Bronze League Heroes, so definitely, guys, go follow him. I'll put a link down below. He, uh, he makes some YouTube videos as well. He finds the great game. So many good base races, but this game wasn't about the base race. This game was about Xander going in that, in that base. He had an awesome build. I loved it. The idea was there. He just put the pylon and the cannon way too far forward. If he would have backed it up with more cannons, would have been absolutely fine. And then after that, he lost his main, lost his natural. He was thinking on his feet, though, 
and he built Void Rays, which is very smart because he had the game, then he threw it away, then he uh, ran to the top right side with that hidden base he had. He had so many Void Rays to fully commit and kill off the Zerg, but then he threw the game away again. It's a roller coaster of emotion, guys, here over at Bronze League Heroes. So, anyways, if you guys would like to submit your replays to Bronze League Heroes, send them to huskyreplays at gmail.com. That is H U S K Y, Husky Replays, R E P L A Y S, at gmail.com. Do not send them anywhere else. They will not be checked. If you sent them to Facebook or Twitter or wherever, they will not be checked unless they are in huskyreplays at gmail.com. All right, guys, that was a ton of fun. I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello, everyone. This is HSTS here, back with another Bronze League Heroes. I, I love saying that. I love casting Bronze League Heroes. I love watching Bronze League Heroes. And really, I just, I just love saying Bronze League Heroes. Let's be completely honest. But first, without further ado, let us go ahead and introduce our players. I'm losing my voice a little bit, but that is because I have been casting a lot of StarCraft II, and uh, I don't want to give myself a break because this replay was sent to me by Sinvicta, who is a good friend of mine. He's the one who actually sorts through all the replays, so a big shout-out to him. He's always great. Down at the bottom right side, it is going to be the one. It is going to be the two. It is going to be the downfall as our blue Zerg and his opponent spawning in the top left side. He has played many games. He has lost many more. He is here to show us a legendary strategy or something. I don't know. It's going to be JY Godspeed. Not exactly sure what that means, but uh, we're going to go ahead and go with it regardless. JY Godspeed versus downfall. I guess we'll just have to see if JY Godspeed is going to be his downfall. Boom! Here's going to be an overlord right now in the middle. He's actually going to be spotting this probe. There he is right there. So he's going to be able to spot that, see exactly what's going to be going on. Oh, a hatchery first versus Protoss. That is a bold move, good sir. Now, I do have to say that uh, thankfully for downfall, he is at least expanding, because we have seen a lot of one-base Zergs versus Protoss in Bronze League. But I will also say that uh, getting in hatchery first... Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. We're going to be having a cannon rush. Oh, this is when you know it's going to be a good Bronze League Heroes. When you turn into Bronze League Heroes and you're like, I wonder if this game's going to be good or not, just wait a couple minutes, because if you see a proxy pylon in the base within the first two minutes, you know it's going to be good. So we do have downfall right here. He does say, hey, I can see that pylon right there. Now his problem is that he's just now going to be seeing this one. I think uh, he's going to pull off the drones for now. And you can actually use this many drones to kill off cannons, so he should be fine here to deal with that. Uh, just needs to make sure that probe doesn't kill off his drones. Oh, actually kills that one off. That was not a cancel. Unfortunately, the other cannon's going to be nearly done. He completely ran by it, decided not to stop for that one. An additional cannon will be done, so the natural is going to be safe. But the problem is, uh-oh, downfall making the sad face, the stink face. He's giving him the good old stink eye. But uh, anyways... The problem right now, and this is actually something good that you guys can learn from if you're in the Zerg spot, is that you want to secure the ones inside the main base first, because what the problem is, is that these cannons are going to be locking down the main base, and then he can put a cannon right here on the high ground, which I believe is in range of that hatchery. So losing the hatchery itself at the low ground, not that big of a deal if your opponent is cannon rushing you. Where is the queen at? Oh no, the supply block! Oh, that's no good. And the other queen that's building is kind of at the worthless hatchery. Now these drones should be able to kill off this cannon. But at what cost, you guys? At what cost? Oh, does kill that off. And unfortunately, there's only three drones left. This probe going to be raking in the kills right now. Uh, no, he decides to drop a cannon down first. But uh, could kill off those other two drones. They're super low on HP. He is going to attempt to do so. The spawning pool getting blasted away by these cannons now. This is a this is a typical Bronze League Heroes. It does look at that probe now. Up to two kills here. We'll see if the probe can continue the pain. Oh, I actually think those Zerglings and Drone could have killed that off with the, with the back of the Queen, but he does decide to back out. Just can't allow those shields to regenerate. I think it may be too little too late, though. Who actually wins this battle? I have no idea. Uh-oh, I think he said uh, he's showing quite how upset he is right now. And he does throw out the GG here. 
JY Godspeed got to be returning the favor as well. Now, I'm not quite sure who I'm cheering for at this point. Now, am I cheering for JY Godspeed, who has kept his cool, his calm, and collected composure? Or do I cheer for Downfall, who's currently getting cheese? Why do this? Do you have to that badly? Do you have to that badly? I don't know what that means. Neither does JY Godspeed. It looks like the hatchery is going to be taking out this one drone right here. You do not want to go to the left side. Oh, God. Is he going to make it? Is he going to make it? Nope. No. Not all that cannons like denied. Downfall's change. Uh, the downfall is saying, cheese me like you did. Cheese me like one of your French ladies. But anyways, we do have the spawning pool going to be up. We have the assimilator down. And we actually do now have the six and a half minute gateway coming up for Godspeed. So Godspeed's actually in pretty good shape right now. He is ahead in supply. He's not supply blocked and he can expand and he's killed off the bases. So JY Godspeed has got a lot of good things going for him right now. We'll just have to wait and see exactly what he does to kind of capitalize on that. Uh, I honestly do not know. But for now, it does look like the queen here going to be injecting her larva all over that hatchery, which is, oh, that's so hot. That is so hot. I feel like you should be in a, in a dark room by yourself as you watch that happen. But regardless, uh, I think we're going to be transitioning into a little bit slower side of things. But uh, I got to say that cannon rushing in Bronze League Hero, it, apparently it's just a thing. I feel like, yes, you know, you see cannon rush, rushes in Master League, Platinum League, Diamond League, all of that. Uh, Downfall saying, I will fight to my last. Come get me. Coming out swinging with the big words. We'll see if he can swing out with any actual units. He does have Lair Tech on the way, which could easily transition into a, uh, a Nidus Worm, which normally I wouldn't say, you know, as their go one base versus Protoss. But if you have cannons along all of your creep, it's probably a good idea to do something other than just make a bunch of Zerglings, which is actually exactly what we're seeing is a bunch of Zerglings. However, we do have that Lair Tech, and it is going to be a Nidus Worm coming on up right now. So there it is. And right now, what do we got going on for JY Godspeed? He's got a Stargate on the way, which is honestly not that bad of a choice. He has too many probes at his Nexus, but it's better to have too many than too few. That is for sure, especially at this level of play. The probe is going to be moving out very easily. Could go for an expansion right now. Decides to spend the money on two more cannons, though. The, where are those two cannons? Oh, my God, he's still adding out of the cannons in here. I love how JY Godspeed is like, all right, so my two options right here are going to be expand or build two more cannons at his base. I'm going to go with the two cannons. I think that's the right choice here. So he's going to be going for even more cannons here. We do have the nice worm going to be coming up inside the main base. Now remember, this will make a noise, but he doesn't know exactly where it's at just right away. And this nice worm has got a lot of room left for units. I think it's going to be a lot of zerglings out right now. And there they are. Unloads those zerglings right away. Does JY Godspeed know about it? Well, he sure as hell does now. But you got to remember the cannon placement behind the mineral line is actually really good. No probes. What are you doing? Stop attacking. You don't want to do that. Never attack with your probes unless you absolutely have to. So many of them, I think, were just killed right there. Let's take a look here. Six workers killed off uh, just in that moment. Not that bad. Right now, I think that Downfall, though, realizes that there is a Void Ray on the way. Has got to deal with it. Uh, downfall is supply blocked, but he's doing the uh, the good way to get unsupply blocked, which is to lose all your units. I mean, why make pesky overlords? They just cost money. Uh, why not just throw your units away to a bunch of cannons? He will kill off the Stargate, though, so no Void Ray today. And also, the cannons... Uh, are going to be vulnerable here as the Stalker gets taken out. I don't think he's going to cancel that. No, he did. That is money lost. Uh, these cannons over here are somehow not in range of every building and the Zerg player's base. I guess Creep going to be his saving grace. He may win just because a uh, base purely on Creep because look at these. These cannons are not in range. Keep in mind, though, that he does have that natural up, which our Zerg player is nowhere near getting a base. And, uh, you know, even if he loses his tech up here, he still has cannons right there. Should be good to go. He will need to throw down his tech structures before he ends up losing. Anyway, uh, he's going to try and get a cyber core. Cyber core is on the way. Oh, no, the barracks died right at the last second, I think, is what happened there. Wasn't able to actually finish constructing that. The Lings have cleaned out all of the tech. Zergling speed, though, just now starting. There's the base down here, which the Lings could easily move down to destroy. But I think downfall, his downfall might be the fact that he's not scouting. Also, supply blocks are everybody's downfall in Bronze League Heroes. He does have Overlords now on the way. Oh, he does actually spot the base down here. He will be able to take this one out. The cannons are up. The probes pulled off the line to try and deal with this. We'll see if he can pull it off. I don't think he's going to be able to. The probe's going to have to retreat now. The cannons are going to be protecting it. Lings what are you doing? Don't kill the assimilator. Kill the probes. There he goes. He's got to be turning around. So many probes are going to die right now. 20 probes. 
22, 23, can he get any more? Nope, that's gonna be it. These, oh, no, he did actually get one more there, I think, but either way, the cannon's gonna be able just to rake in the kills. Look at that, 13 kills on that cannon are now 15 and seven kills on the other one. So our Protoss player is gonna be stabilizing a little bit. Godspeed, JY, Godspeed. You're gonna need, oh God, more Zerglings randomly running up there. That was definitely a bad rally point. Uh, I do like how he's being, you know, active with his scouting forces around the map to try and see everything he can. He's told them to go to almost every location on the map, which is actually really, really good. This is really smart. Um, ideally, you would actually split up the links. Oh my god, what are you doing, drones? It does look like the dinosaur gets taken out. These drones now are stuck behind enemy lines. They are spawning in the worst possible place. There's going to be the prismatic alignment. Apparently, it's going to be lots of spores and spines. Four spores right now. A spine car. Now five spores. He's going to be trying to cancel these and rebuilding them. Can he actually buy enough time to get these static defenses up? We got the one zealot and the void ray. The cancel was not soon enough on that one. We'll just have to wait and see, though. What the hell is going on? This is, like, so weird. And what's funny is he's building these off of uh, a location that is not getting fresh creeps, so they're slowly going to be taking damage here. And do we have a spine? Why'd you cancel that one, bro? It was so close to being done. He decided to change it into a spine. The Zealot here is going to be able to kill off one spore, and he will eventually get taken out by those links. I think there's just too many links to handle. And these units, though, are going to be taking a little bit of damage here and there because remember that Zerg buildings take damage when they are off of creep unless you unburrow them and have them waddle around on their legs. Here's going to be the nice worm, though, and also remember that nice worms will spread creep. A uh, pro tip of the day! Downfall could reduce the amount of damage that these taken by having this overlord poop everywhere, uh, which I, I always encourage Zerg players to have your overlords poop more, and it does look like right now the Zergling right there does give up as it does look like Godspeed attempting to expand down there, but we also have the creep thread now from the nice worm going to be saving these spines and spores. I don't know if this is actually enough to attack the base, but uh, we have quite a game here as the supplies are relatively even, all things considered. I, what are you doing, Spine Call? He's trying to find a place to burrow with no such luck. Finally finds one right there, though. And the Ling's not going to be able to do all that much because the, uh, I mean, the cannons are just too great. There is going to be the Nexus going on down here, and more Zerglings going to be on the way. Still no tech switch at a downfall. He's just sticking to... His one base play with 13 drones on minerals, three drones on gas, and nice from over on the left side. That one has been spotted by the Zergling. Maybe he's going to transfer some drones over there to eventually get a base. But the Void Ray right now might get taken out. He's trying to kill the Spore. It's not going to happen, though. Only 25 HP remains on that Void Ray. Uh, two Void Rays can kill two Spores, though. So we'll have to wait and see if uh, those two Voids are able to make it happen or if the Static D over here of Downfall will be enough. More cannons on the way for Godspeed. I love how Protoss players in Bronze League, I mean, really their best way of dealing with something that they don't know how to deal with is just build more cannons. I mean, the, the idea is good. We'll see if it actually shapes up here moving forward. But for now, it does look like the Void are going to be moving in. He should be sending in both Void Rays at once. I'm not quite sure what's going on. We'll be able to kill off one spine. Needs to back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up. My daddy taught me good. I'm backing up. Uh, anyways, we have the Void Rays now trying to kill off. The other Spine Crawler will go down before any amount of massive damage has been dealt. Now it's just going to be Spores and Lings, but if he moves the Void Ray a little bit too close, that's going to be it. Both players starting to hover a lot of money here. He does actually manage to attack the Nidus Worm here. Here's going to be the Natural taken at the fourth base. <laughs> Oh, God, he's expanding at the fourth base for his uh, next base. Oh, God, more drones have been brought over here. Here comes the Spore Crawler. He's trying to take out the Void. Not so lucky today. A good angle over here to be able to kill off this Spore Crawler. Does he get the cancel in time? Yes, he does. The four Lings are put on hold position. The Void Ray just raking in those kills. He is now a mentor. Although, really, has this Void Ray learned anything valuable because he's just killing off Zerglings that are on hold position? We'll have to wait and see. He's going to be killing off more and more Lings as he just gets promoted through the ranks. Oh, the Hatcher over here gets spotted as well. Really nothing over here to defend this location. Does he Prismatic Alignment? Uh, he's actually just looking at this Void Ray for an extended period of time. And the other Void Ray, uh, did he end up losing it? That's the real question. There's one Void Ray. There's number two. No, it's going to be chilling out over here. Oh, I think he did actually end up losing one. But either way, the Spore Callers once again taking damage from being off the creep. There's going to be the fourth Nidus Worm of today. And the Queens here, they have full energy because of the horrible macro. And he's going to be able to transfuse these bad boys all day. That is one thing I love about Bronze League Heroes is they always have way more money than they should just because they can't spend it, and they always have way more energy than they should because they don't inject larva. 
It does look like this can over here going to be able to cut the score. We actually have silly minor battles taking place everywhere. The Queens, though, might be able to save the hatchery, might be able to kill off the Void Ray, and they do get it. Able to take that one down, throw it out the transfuses on the hatchery as well to bring her up to about half HP. Yes, I just referred to a hatchery as her. That is absolutely fine. Drones are actually on the way. So now, now we're finally going to be seeing a two base versus a two base. But unfortunately for Godspeed, he's mined out his main. Downfall is not going to be mining out his main anytime soon. He's had no drones mining this entire time. But he has managed to take his base over now in the bottom center. And the cannons over here. Oh, God, a bad rally point. A run of death uh, by those Zerglings trying to make it past those cannons. That is not a good rally point. But we finally... Finally have six Mutalisks on the way. He has gotten these Mutas off of one gas. These are the coveted, the patented, the trademarked and bookmarked build of getting Mutalisks off of one base with one gas. It is uh, very difficult to do. Only the most prestigious Bronze League players can pull it off. But so far, these four Mutas actually going to be flying in here at the exact perfect time. I think the one Void Ray might be able to take these out. I honestly don't know. The cannons are not up yet. There's a Prismatic alignment, but the fifth Mutal is going to be showing up right now. I don't actually think that this Void Ray can kill these off. There's no upgrades on this Void. There's no cannons to back it up, and uh, there's no pylon to power those cannons. So I think that one Void Ray is going to be taking out these Mutal is hitting at the absolute ideal time here. You got to be able to kill off these cannons. And again, with no pylon, these cannons are completely worthless. The ricochet damage killing off that pile are they the cannon. But uh, it does look like this base is going to have to be given up, which is going to be so frustrating for Godspeed. Uh, I mean, he could try making units other than void rays and cannons. But hey, hey, who, who am I to judge? Uh, 42 workers, uh, definitely full saturation there. Almost double what he actually needs, but he can't mine anywhere because of those pesky, pesky mutas. What is also pesky is that this base is still alive over here. So downfall, remember, I can't believe earlier he had already GG'd. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, my. oh, my God. Oh, my God, he left the game. Oh, I did not expect that. I was go I was about to say... Oh, hey, we still have about, you know, 20, 23, 24 minutes to go. Uh, but no, it looks like Godspeed, getting a little bit frustrated, decides to rage quit. I love, I love how, oh my god, how he had so many options on how to win this. Still in the game, he was ahead in supply. But his cannon rush didn't work, so he ended up rage quitting right now. I think his income was probably even higher. It was definitely comparable at this point. And all he had to do was build, like, two Phoenix and secure this expansion. There was only five mutas on the field. Nothing was in production. He was still mining off of one gas. He had the double extractors over here. Still only one gas mining here, and it was almost mined out as well. Oh, God, Godspeed. What am I going to do with you, man? You, you make me laugh with your cannon rush, and then you make me cry with your random rage quitting of the game. But this is why we all love Bronze League Heroes. Oh, God, the players may be bad. The games may be bad. But, my God, they are so good. Uh, of course, here we, we cast the very best of the very worst. And this... This one definitely qualifies. Uh, so big thanks to Sinvicta. A lot of you have been subscribing to him, watching his content and all of that. Uh, his link's down below. He's the one who sorts through literally thousands, thousands of replays to get the good ones. If you would like to send a good Bronze League Heroes game, send it to huskyreplays at gmail.com. There is a link down below. And, uh, yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun, guys. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HGS Yasuke here, back with another Bronze League Heroes! Man, honestly, if this whole casting thing never quite works out, I can just make a career out of yelling things into the Grand Canyon. Because uh, I'm definitely getting pretty good at that, at least. As we are now on episode, I think, 33. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Bronze League Heroes, it is where we cast the very best of the very worst. The players may be bad, the games may be bad, but my god, they are so good. So let's go ahead and introduce our players down in the bottom right side. It is going to be Darren. Look at that. I'm trying to practice my epic Darren. Oh, that's so cool. Anyways, it is going to be Darren. I believe that that is not Darren. I think Darren is just one R, if I'm not mistaken. 
But uh, if not, I apologize. Down the bottom left side, it is going to be a roof. A roof. I don't know what that means, but I'm going to be having fun saying it. Maybe it's Fora backwards. Euphoria backwards. I don't know. I don't know, but it's Darren versus a roof. A roof. A roof. A roof is on fire. If he wins, maybe we could be saying that. I don't know. Oh, we got the coveted. The coveted and patented Bronze League Heroes 3 Supply Depot wall in. Uh, you know, it, we're only a minute and a half into this game, but it is time for a pro tip of the day. Uh, never build two Supply Depots before anything. You either want to go Supply Depot Command Center, or Supply Depot Barracks, or even Supply Depot Gas. Those are your only options. However, that does mean that Araf cannot get up this ramp. He's going to be scouting up there. I think he's still even going to see the barracks. So this probe is like, why is this Terran player already walled in? He's like, hey, I can see you guys up there. What do you, what do you got going on? And we'll see if he can actually micro. He, he keeps clicking it in there, I think, to try and get him going there. You can see he has him selected. This probe is so confused. He's been told to scout even more. This probe is like, I'm trying. I'm trying to go up there. I just don't know how. And there he goes. I think he's individually going to. Nope. That po <laughs> This poor probe is so confused. He's like, I'm going to get there. I don't care how long it takes. I don't know who you are. And I don't care how long it takes. But I'm going to find you and I'm going to scout you. That was a movie reference. But either way, the probe here is still... <laughs> <laughs> Still trying to find his way over there. I just realized there's actually a wolf down here. That's kind of cool. See him chilling out down there. Got some uh, Game of Thrones wolf going on. But uh, either way, did he finally tell the probe individually? Oh, God, this poor probe, this Bronze League probe doesn't know what to do. Uh, we do have another barracks going to be on the way. Also, always build orbital commands. If he doesn't build an orbital command right now, he is doing it wrong. Let's see, is he saving up for an orbital? Please be saving up for the orbital, please. Oh, he saved it for 150 and then made a SCV. These guys are toying with my heartstrings already. This is why we love Bronze League Heroes, though. Uh, no cybernetics core. Do I even need to make that a pro tip of the day? You either want to be expanding off of one gateway or going for a cybernetics core. There it is. There's the cybernetics core at the four and a half minute mark after double zealots. So he'll have that. Would definitely recommend uh, getting the cybernetics core. Basically, as soon as you can, you can go for one Zelda if you want. Did this probe ever figure out this ramp? Oh, he did! He did. We're all so proud of him. Able to actually scout up there now. We are going to be having the add-on here for Darren as well. Factory going to be coming on up. Now, I do want to say something really quickly. At the time of casting this, I actually just got back from Red Bull Training Grounds with Day 9. It was a ton of fun. But uh, if you're wondering, where's Husky, man? He's lost his passion. Uh, keep in mind that I was actually casting for three days straight, uh, six to eight hours a day. So I was, I, there was still a lot of passion going around. It was just all on, uh, on a live stream as opposed to on my channel. So right now we do have the Forge popping up, just chilling there. Good to go. And we'll see what that Forge is for. So we have two gateway into Forge. Not quite sure what this Forge is going to be for. Now, now, Forges are actually great versus Terran for a, a variety of reasons. Number one, upgrades are great. And number two, cannons help with drops. But normally you're going to be seeing those types of things in like 10 minutes as opposed to right now. So we'll see exactly what that transition to. Plus one attack is going to be on the way for Araf. He does. I feel like I'm saying his name differently every time. There's Aruf, Arif, Araf, Fora backwards. Or maybe I should just do with Fora. I don't even know what to call this guy. But uh, either way, third gateway going to be going down. And, you know, honestly, three gateways and a forge. Not the worst thing you could be doing in Bronze League Heroes. That's for sure. Uh, not the most embarrassing thing I've seen yet. I, I still love the three Supply Depot wall in, And I know it is so tempting, Terran players out there, to do this. But don't you ever dare. There is no situation where that is the correct choice whatsoever. I don't care what alternate universe you live in. That is not a good strategy. But either way, we are uh, going to have plus one attack for Terran on the way as well. Siege Tank's going to be coming up. So it looks like it is going to be Marine Siege Tank. Marines have no stim, no shields, and no Marauder slow if Marauders do decide to pop out later. Just going to be straight up going for those Siege Tanks. Araf, man, got to be working on these three gateways. I got to say, though, Araf going for Warp Gate and not only researching Warp Gate, but also Chrono boosting out the research. Very impressive stuff there. The plus one attack for both players is on the way. Hey, hey. As the probe gonna move on out, is probably gonna get shot by the tank. He scouts that there's no expansion. What is Darren gonna do? When I when I make up my own songs, I don't actually rhyme anything, which is like the standard way of writing a song. I just said a pretty good beat, and uh, I guess pretty good is you know really up to you if you, if you guys think it's good or not. But it does look like the zealots gonna be moving out. Ever notice that the zealots are like as wide as the road? 
Like like a, a lane of traffic. Look how huge that Zelda is. Obviously, it's not to scale. I'm just saying. These look amazing. Those freaking wolves are sweet. So this is going to be the modified version of uh, of New Kirk. New Kirk Cité Precinct. And they took out the watchtowers. So just to keep that in mind, no watchtowers here. Also keep in mind that Araf has 1,200 minerals. So save it up early right now. we got Starport going to be on the way for Darren. And Darren, has he built a command center at all? I don't think he has, but man, is he going to be covered in missile turrets. I think it's this guy's job to build all those missile turrets. So that's going to take some, some time. It does look like the tank is in a pretty good position here to actually go ahead and hold it off. Does he decide to siege it up, or is he just going to leave it in pom-pom mode? Pom-pom mode is the old-school Korean way of saying siege tanks in regular mode as opposed to siege mode because they make a pom-pom noise every time they shoot. But it does look like it will indeed... B siege mode. So our Terran player Darren should be okay. We do have those cannons on the way down. Look at this, man. Everyone, everyone is protected from drops. So chances of drops having any effect on anybody this game are quite low here, as uh, they are positioning themselves for a longer-term game. Actually, do have an expansion on the way at the nine-minute mark for Araf. He does have the armor upgrade as well. One thing you'll notice a lot of Bronze League players do as well is rush to the upgrades, but then never rush to get like two and three upgrades. You'll just see the 1-1 one, one done because you do need that Twilight Council to start unlocking those additional upgrades. Ah, so there they are right there. We'll just go ahead and see if he manages to get those out or not. Plus one armor going to be on the way here for Darren. So really no one going to have a major upgrade advantage. But uh, for now, let's just go ahead and speed things up a little bit. Let's go ahead and help them move along. Make it look like they're playing much more quickly than they actually are just to, uh, just to make sure that we, we get to see the action as quickly as possible. We do have Marines, uh, Medivacs on the way now, and both players actually just, mm, I almost said maxing out. Uh, a, a really good player right now would be at like 140 supply, but but we're watching Bronze League Heroes, so we're sitting at 40 supply, so only about 100 supply down, as a Protoss player can get maxed out at around the 15, uh, maybe 15 to 16 minute mark, if played aggressively, like in Colossus Tech, etc. But for now, we have Darren going to be working on a lot of medevacs here. I'm wondering if Darren's going to try to go for some sort of drop. Keep in mind that cannons, while one of the best, if not the best, defensive structure in the game, they're not very good at stopping Terran drops because they're just going to unload the Marine and Marauder. The Marauder's going to kill him off almost instantaneously. And that's just something to keep in mind there. Looks like the Observer right there moving around super fast just because we are on times two speed. As Araf, I also love how Araf has his, his probe over here this entire time. Uh, Darn man, still the one base superstar over here, just kind of making tons of stuff. He is actually macroing quite well, all things considering, and he is actually in the lead of supply. Has managed to keep his resources relatively low, all things considered here. But we also had the expansion for Araf, which is going to prove to be troublesome. Stim pack finally going to be finishing here for Darren. We'll see exactly what uh, kind of comes out of that. We have a Stargate on the way now as well. So these guys, they have what I like to call the uh, the, the, the well manner friendship agreement, the bromance going on. And a gentleman's agreement, perhaps. But uh, either way, no rush 15 minutes is apparently the name of the game. Only really two things have been lost this entire time. We do have stim pack nearly done. Or excuse me, stim pack is done. We have Marauder Slow Concussive Shells just going to be finishing up there as well. Observer here going to be scouting out. Oh my god, it's like the most passive game I think I've ever seen. And I'm all right with that because that means these Bronze League heroes are going to have many more tools in their arsenal to make us giggle. And uh-oh, uh-oh, it is going to be a big old drop right now as he does go ahead and decide to load them up and load them up. We'll see if he actually manages to go ahead and go for that. What is this medevac doing, and why are these stalkers not attacking it? These guys are actually gentlemen. They they are 100% gentlemen. They do not want to have an unhonorable duel. There we go right there. They do manage to get a couple of shots out. These units are so confused, though, by the siege tanks on the high ground. Do manage to take out one of those units there. Observer here should be able to spot any drops that are moving out. Uh, I, I'm kind of curious as to what the blistering APM is this game. 32 to 19. 19 APM. That is once every two. No, once every three seconds he clicks. So here he goes right here. I think it's going to make his APM triple here. Yes, it does. Look at that. 25 APM now. They're going to go ahead and speed boost all the way across the map and stop. This is like in LA traffic, man, when you have those jerk hole drivers who, like, they floor it at the green light to swerve around you in the intersection, breaking, like, five different laws only to stop immediately in front of you for more traffic. But it does like right now, Rob just kind of try and go for the kill here. The siege tank on the high ground is going to be doing a lot of damage to the Thor itself, not doing too bad because the Immortals are actually not in range here. The Siege Tank got the five kills. The Immortals do eventually clean it up, though. Oh, we are back in LA traffic as Darren uh, realizing that he's not going to get to where he wants to go anytime soon. So there he goes. We'll see if he actually decides to unload. Oh, nope, more LA traffic here. Here we go. We got some stop-and-go traffic here on the 405 northbound. 
Um, there has been an accident over there. There is an overturned uh, an overturned siege tank that has spilled its contents all over the place. Um, medics are on the scene, trying to heal everyone back out. But here comes the main drop inside the base, and it does look like Garrosh is going to be forcing a base race right away. And I got to say, I I've talked to a lot of Bronze League hero players, and uh, many of them have said that, yep, uh, base race is quite common. Also, a bunch of union workers over here, man. They refuse to work until they get higher salaries. But sorry, you are a prisoner, and that's... You, you can't really, I mean, a prison union, I feel like that's not a thing, but it does look like right now that this army is going to be moving forward here. They do have the 1-1. One, one. Araf is actually going to be backing all the way home here. Darren's got lots of money. I think he's lost every single SCB already, though. Uh, yes, he lost every single SCB and his command center, so deciding not to lift off there and instead rely on his pure micro alone. He has no production facilities either. Really, the only thing he can do is start working on an attack upgrade. Because he's already got high sec auto tracking. Oh god, you gotta be careful here. We'll be able to kill off a lot of the zealots here. Not sure what those marines are doing. Why are so many of these marines running around in a circle? I don't know what the hell that was. It was quite fun for them, I suppose. But uh, it does look like it. No, no, Ralph, what are you doing? You gotta be careful, man. As pure gateway units, never good versus marine marauders. Especially when those marine marauders have upgrades and stim pack and combat shields and strip. There's even vikings here. Don't land those Vikings, though. Whatever you do, the Immortals will kill them off. You can land them afterwards. And there we go. Got to go ahead and land those on up. Should be just fine. Got to be careful here with these Vikings, though, as more units are going to be warping in. Stalkers, especially, going to be good at taking out those Vikings if possible. Oh, that pylon gets taken out. Delaying the upgrades. No possibility for reinforcements now. As I don't think there's a single gateway on the field. We do have the proxy pylon established over here right now. And uh, Darren, this is really your game at this point. This is your moment, man. This is your time to shine. Lots of Marines and Marauders. Really no sort of uh, of anything for our Protoss player going out. Does land the Vikings right now. Not a bad choice. He wants to DPS down as quickly as he possibly can. He wants to kill off this next if possible. Keep in mind, though, that Araf does have 3,200 minerals. Uh, Darn has money too, but he has no way of spending it. All these probes are going to get taken out. That's actually a huge deal right now. What's the worker count? 14. Where are there 14 workers? What? There, apparently there's 14 workers over here in the main base with a pylon on the way. Warp gates are now back up. This army going to be hustling its way over here as the Nexus has already been taken out. Wants to go straight for the pylons to prevent any warping in of additional units. We'll see if he actually manages to get that. Now the question I have, which I actually don't know the answer to, and I'll actually have to test this out afterwards, is if a unit is warping in, say a zealot, and the pylon powering the warp gate that is warping it in is killed, the warp gate becomes unpowered, does that zealot stop warping in? I don't know. These are the things that uh, never really come into play. But it does look like this next is going to be going down as well. But look at this, a last desperation move by Araf. He is making so many gateways. He's got to be careful not to spend all of his money, though, because he's not going to have any income right now. And, uh, wait, excuse me, he has one pro of income. This is like working minimum wage at McDonald's, man. You are just working 9 to 5 just to feed yourself. And that's just off the food that you steal. The money that they pay you, definitely not enough to buy food. But it does look like moving forward now, the 1-1 one, one Marine and Marauder are going to be able to make it happen. Now, the question I have is, is Darren uh, going to be able to defend versus any warping that may be happening here pretty soon? It's currently 3 supply to 44. Darren going to be killing off the only mining base, if you can even call it a mining base. It, is it a mining base if there's one probe there? I mean, I feel like we should we should go to the StarCraft kind of dictionary and look up the definition of mining base. Because I feel like this this may not be it. Lots is also going to be warping in right now. And where do they go? Does he actually decide to attack or is he going to back up and spend all of his money first? That's the question that we all want to know the answer to. How many probes are left? There is a single probe. One probe versus zero SCVs. Literally an infinite amount more of workers uh, for, for Araf than for Darren. And it does look like Darren right now. Darren, excuse me, looking around to try and figure out exactly what's going on. But keep in mind that these uh, bases will be revealed. Oh, nope, but Nexus just went down over here. So he's got to try and move around to scout it out. Unfortunately, he doesn't realize this is his vision here, and he is about to have a rude awakening. He has my life for ire. The Bronze League hero zealot's got to be moving out. This may be the first time they do anything of any use. All of a sudden, Darn realizing exactly what's going on. He's got to try and get his army back over here. But the real question is, is do they get stuck in L.A. traffic? We are about to find out. Keep an eye on that minimap. Is they able to uh, make it all the way across the map in time? He should have enough time if he stems or loads them inside the medbacks. 
Actually, why are you guys running on the ground when you have flying carrier medevac things that can carry you across the map and use a speed boost? Oh god! Oh god! Oh no! The supply depots are all that remains. There's the one engineering bay as well. Keep an eye on the structures tab here. He's trying to get over here. The medevac's making it in time. He stims, but I don't know if it's gonna be in time. Oh my god! Oh my god! It was too supply to point. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Darren, what have you done? Darren, what have you done? You are a Terran player. This should never happen to Terran players. Let's let's go back to the moment where Darren lost it all. Oh god, Darren, what have you done? Oh dear. Darren, he had the chance to lift off. I want to see if he actually did have the chance and if or if he was just lazy. Uh let's find out. Let's find out. Once the once they load up inside the medevac, shouldn't be too long. Shouldn't be too long now, so Darren, I feel like definitely could have used some pro tips of the day. Keep an eye on the uh, on the medevacs here as they they load up and then several moves move over there and then they stop. Then they move, then they stop, and I think they stop. Over, then they move and then they stop again. All right, so here's the attack right here. Uh, definitely plenty of time to lift off here. There's only five stalkers, so could have escaped, could have ran the workers, could have really done anything at all to save his base. But I guess, hey man, that is why it's called Bronze. Heroes! I almost went in the pro tip of the day voice right there. But anyways, guys, big thanks to my friends and Victa. He's the one who sorts through lots and lots of replays. And uh, I cast the ones that I think are the funniest. So hopefully you guys get a kick out of it as well. Here at Bronze League Heroes, just to encourage you guys to go out there and play some more StarCraft. Because if these guys can play like this, then hey, play however the hell you want. Because StarCraft is meant for fun, and we should keep it that way. So anyways, hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HGS Gasky here, back with another Bronze League Heroes! God, I seriously love saying that every single time. Uh, I know what you guys are thinking, Husky, you just cast a Bronze League Heroes yesterday. What on God's green earth are you doing casting again already? Well, uh, if you guys follow me on Twitter, you will know that uh, most tournaments out there are not releasing replays currently. Uh, just it, it just happens to line up that way where there's not a lot of replays. And a lot of the pro gamers are currently traveling around playing at WCS, at Red Bull, at MLG. So there's not a whole lot of premium content out there right now. So what we're going to be doing here today is casting Bronze League Heroes number two of the week. And I couldn't be more excited. So if you guys like Bronze League Heroes... And I uh, give it a thumbs up. I don't know, guys. I'm so bad at asking for this stuff. If you like the fact that I'm casting two, then I guess thumbs up or a comment. I don't know. I Really, guys, do we have to talk about this? Anyways, down in the bottom left side, it is going to be our blue Protoss. Last Spartan D. <laughs> Or it's Last Sparta and, and then the, the sentence is over. Either way, it is Last Sparta, uh, Spartan D. And his opponent up at the top right side is Shetbird. Which I feel like if you uh, replace the E with an I and then added an A to Bird, his name would be way better, but also banned immediately. Anyways, it's going to be the last Spartan D versus Shet Bird. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I didn't preview this game before watching it. Uh, his name is going to take me by surprise every time I say it. And here we go. Shet Bird's trying to go in there. And Shet Bird, and watch out. Here comes last Spartan D and Shet Bird. He's just going to run. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I find that way too funny. Anyways, this is going to be a TVP here on Derelict Watcher, which seriously sounds like a pedophile's name. But either way, what are you doing, Last Spartan? Look at this. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, this game is so good. This game is so good. We're not even three minutes in. All right. So we got Last Spartan D already throwing down three. <laughs> Oh my god, he threw, he threw down four pylons. Alright, so last Spartan D throwing down, I believe, four pylons. Four pylons before Gateway. Oh god, he's gonna have some uh, he's gonna have some pretty good warp end locations here. I'm actually crying. I'm sorry. There the goes the gateway at the three and a half minute mark. What do we got going on for shit? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not gonna be able to handle this game, guys. I'm warning you already. Just their names and the fact that it's four pylon before gateway. Oh, I can't handle it. I can't handle it. If uh, if you were looking for a serious cast, you you took a wrong turn somewhere because it is time for Crazy Town. Anyways, it does look like Shetbird going to try and take out this pylon over here with his single Marine. She will definitely be able to get that pylon down before Warp Gate is done because, well, the Cybernex Core hasn't even started yet. So 
should be just fine there. Shepard just going to go mining along here. Uh, oh, what are you doing, Shepard? <laughs> He's going to pull up all the workers here. So Shedbird going to pull way more workers than can even – it's a full surround there. These guys are like, what, what, let us in there, guys. All right, so, well, that pylon is definitely not going to be doing any damage to anybody as he did pull off all those workers, delaying his mining a great deal. Two Marines now out here for Shetbird. Now that uh, pylon number one has gone down, there's only two more additional options for Last Spartan to be warping in right at his opponent's base. Now, I actually really like this pylon positioning overall. The idea is good. I like it. But uh, the problem is that you want to wait until at least the eight-minute mark to start throwing these things down. Just because... Uh, I mean, that's way too much supply, or way too many pylons. You know, although, if Last Spartan and Shetbird <laughs> were combined into one player, it would be great, because then Shetbird wouldn't be supply blocked, and Last Spartan would have units. It would be like a Silver League player at that point. So hopefully they can combine forces, but for now, they are sworn enemies. We do have an engineering bay going to be on the way. Looks like a pretty typical one base play at a Shetbird, as we are used to seeing in Bronze League Heroes. Um, just to give a pro tip of the day. Remember versus Terran, you want to go for your Cyber Core as quickly as possible, unless you're going to be doing some sort of expand. Just because Warp Gate uh, is, is vi it, it, well, it's not obviously viable, but it's it's the thing you have to get. It's not. It's like past the point of being viable. It is a requirement. So definitely, uh, definitely get that right away, guys. Um, I love the proxy pylons, but I would not set them up this early. And what, Spartan, what are you doing with this probe over here? All right, so we do have three more gateways on the way. It is going to be a four gate, but we also have a Ford. Where's that cannon going down? Oh, my God. It's like the world's latest cannon rush. It's not even a cannon rush. It's not even a contain. It's just a I'm going to put cannons here. All right, so he's got to go ahead and put two cannons here outside the uh, the natural of Shetbird. We'll see if Shetbird is going to Shet himself uh, once he spots us. Now, right now, Shetbird is going to be going for a lot of Marines. Does have a command center on the way. You know, Shetbird's build, actually not the worst thing I've ever seen in Bronze League Heroes. This is actually uh, tolerable, although he does need to get out Stim Pack. He needs to start producing off the factory. I do like the plus one attack right away. That's kind of cute. Um, keep in mind that in Bronze League Heroes, I personally think that the easiest to use unit composition is Marine and Marauder, so I always recommend new players who are playing Terran to go for that. Um, it's just a good way to start practicing the game. Warp Gate's actually almost done. I love that. I'm going to be Corona boosting it out. And definitely want a pylon here. Otherwise, you'll have five unpowered, valuable buildings. Probably want to go ahead and power those on up. But right now, Shedbird making a classic mistake of going for just pure Marine. No upgrades on those Marines, but, uh, you know, Marines are a pretty easy unit to use. I, I think that people get a little bit comfortable with them. There's going to be the four Warp Gates. Does he decide to warp in units right away? Shedbird, once again, is supply block. I think he's been supply blocked for, like, the entire duration of that command center, but it's going to be up pretty soon, giving him that additional supply. I'm kind of waiting to see if last Spartan D warps any ideas. I'm trying to think of, like, a blockbuster Hollywood movie, or maybe it's an HBO series called Shedbird, The Last Spartan. Oh, my God, it would be so good. In a world where the Spartans were defeated much earlier than in the real world, one man, the last Spartan, must avenge uh, the, the Spartans. I was going to say must save the Spartans, but they're already dead. He must avenge the Spartans. This summer, an action-packed thriller. Shetbird, the last Spartan. And then you you watch it, and really all the marketing was in pure hype because then you realize it's like a Bronze League Heroes game instead of like a Grandmaster League game. But uh, then it becomes a little bit campy, and it has a cult following. Then they make the sequel, and it's not as good as the original. You guys, you guys know what I'm talking about. Anyways, that would be a great movie, I feel like. Shetbird, the last Spartan. But uh, anyways, lots of Marines going to be coming on up. I think that was even a medevac here, so finally breaking out of his Tier 1. And got to be moving out here, though. He's got to be so careful. I think that last Spartan can actually win this battle if micro correctly. But, oh, the move command! Oh, no, always with the move command. The Marines right here are going to try and get into a good position. It does look like they will actually be able to clean this out if, uh, well, I don't know. Guys, getting pretty close. He does micro them a little bit closer here to start taking out the stocks. I think he barely has enough to kill off these cannons. But he decides to back up. Shetbird has lost that battle overall. Actually, well, I mean, Protoss has lost way more. But uh, Spartan, he's still got this nice little spot over here. He's got his little his vacation home where he's just constantly warping in all of his friends. The two cannons over here. Six kills on one of the cannons. Only two kills on the other cannon. But still pretty good. I think that probe is now trapped. That probe is not going anyway. Come on. Come on. Let's get this to scroll. I can't even scroll the right way. All right. Well, if I could tilt the camera the right way. 
then you would see the probe there a lot better. But he's just hanging out right now. Look at that. Even Warping. Even got schematics over here for all the Protoss units. We got Sentry. We got Stalker. God, these... I'm sorry, but these things look awesome. I do know for a fact that there are people at Blizzard whose job is it is to make doodads. And they do an amazing job. So shout out to the doodad guy slash lady. Not quite sure which one. We do have another command center on the way for Shepard. I like the idea. Execution can use some work as uh, he does have about a thousand mils. Oh, he's got to try and throw the widow mines right here. Is that in range of the cannon? I believe that it is. Does take out one of those zealots though. And it does look like Shedberg going to be moving up with his range. He now has stem though. Getting really confident here pushing forward. He does end up losing the medevac. Will take out all the stalkers once again. Could kill off these cannons here if he wants to. And does kill off one cannon. Can he kill in the reinforcing units? Yes, he does kill off one. The other one though does not. And that poor Marine man, he has seen some things. He is going to go ahead and back on out of there. But Shedbird, did he manage to even it up a little bit? I would say so. Overall, about 900 resources lost, so not as bad. But he does have three command centers now and no way to expand here. Let's go ahead and check out Last Spartan's base. Looks like he hasn't done anything, really, for quite some time. He does have the plus one attack and plus one armor. Keep in mind that you always want to have your Twilight Council on the way if you're going to be going for upgrades. Should uh, Definitely someone should have expanded by now. Oh, sorry, I had to adjust my microphone there. Hopefully, hopefully that is okay. And uh, anyways, Shedbird now going to be moving out with his Widow Mines here once again. Now, these Widow Mines could be very effective versus the Gateway units. It will one-shot any of the Gateway units. And if, since there's no detection here, that should play out in Shedbird's favor, especially since these ones are out of range of vision. Actually, he placed those perfectly there. I think that was completely accidental, but hey, he's doing good. Come on, we're all cheering for you, Shedbird. We do have a uh, the third command center. He could easily lift that off and float it over here. That would be my second or third or fourth pro tip of the day. I, I kind of lost count of how many pro tips of the day we're actually on. There is going to be a shield upgrade now. Not bad. Twilight Council is going to be on the way. And I Oh, wait. Did he cancel the orbital? Yeah, I think he canceled the orbital. Maybe he accidentally made a planetary. We do have 1-1 one, one also done for Terran. Does he have an armory? Is that uh, Yes, he does have an armory. So he could work on double upgrades there if he would like, which would help him out a great deal. He could be, uh, actually clear this out with a siege tank. He could clear it out with some Marines or Marauders. But screw it, man, because this is Bronze League Heroes. We don't do what strategies work. We do what strategies we feel like with our 33 APM. Uh, I do love how Last Spartan D has 19 APM. So combined, they have uh, almost almost 50 APM there between the two of them. We do have Last Spartan. They're going to be chilling out over here as both players. I mean, this is like a standoff, man. This is some Wild West stuff going on right here. They are just wah, 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 wah as these Marines, man. Uh, we'll see if they're smarter than in the Revolutionary War. Was that the Revol No, the, the Civil War, where they just marched into each other. What war was that where they just marched into each other? Either way, that's exactly what's going to be happening. Oh, God! Oh! <laughs> what, is what is this game? What is this game? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The Widow Mine. Hang on. Oh, God. I cannot believe that. All right, so the Widow Mine, it says they have one and zero kills. But they just massacred those Marines. Oh, God, Shepard, what have you done? Now, the Widow Mines are finally going to get... Oh, God, careful. Don't want to get your uh, splash damage there once again. Does actually manage to kill off some useful units there. I believe that was a Sentry, a Zealot, and a Stalker. So not bad at all. As Shepard able to stabilize a little bit after that. But this game is seriously going to give me a heart attack. We still have one base plays out of both players. Actually, I think the... Uh, I lost plus my mouse. There it is. Um, I think that last Spartan is actually going to expand. Five probes queued up. You never want to queue up more than two if possible. Um, ideally, it's only one, but if you're if you're new, I would go up to three. It's just that you want to have that money to spend elsewhere. And Shetbird Man still... Oh, he's going to get a tech lab here. Could go for the, the uh, Valiant Siege Tank, which I think would be a great choice. But keep in mind that this is Bronze League Heroes, guys. So... So the, the build orders may not be quite refined. The players may be bad. The games may be bad. But my god, they are so good. I always love saying that. It's just so fun to say. And, of course, we're casting the very best of the very worst. So I don't know what you guys expect other than this is actually one of my favorite games so far, man. Last Spartan D's and Shetbird's Mines. Shetbird's Mines, man. They they need to go down in history. Anytime a Widow Mine kills all of your own stuff, it is officially a Shetbird Mine. <laughs> all right, here we go. It looks like a Shetbird trying to move out. There you go. You got a kite away from the wood. They're very nice. He's learning from his mistakes right now. Realizing that his units will work against him. He does charge forward. Takes out the sentry right away. It does look like Shepard finally getting some tracks here. But more units are going to be warping in. These cannons still stand. 18 kills on that cannon. Shepard unable to fully take this out. We'll be doing lots of damage overall, though. 
units lost still favoring Shetford. The main problem, though, is that Shetford, oh god, he has no income. He has no income at all. We got all of his SCVs just chilling out up here. The one siege tank is all he can afford. He has mined out his entire base. He's got to go ahead and siege out this tank. He does have to protect it, though, with uh, with the Marines. There's the big stand for The Stark's going to try and take it out. Probably a mistake here, though. Oh god, it's careful. Widow mine. So much last damage. Oh god, Shetford has lost everything. Oh, no, he does have 10 Marines. Still 10 Marines. It is 37 SCVs and 10 Marines versus 41 probes and 3 Stalkers. Anything could still happen here. There's going to be the big stamp. I think that's going to be it for these Marines. We should at least start to see some long-distance mining here. But you have to remember that last Spartan has a lot more money because he's actually mining here. Got to back it up, back it up, back it up. Oh, no, Marines, what do you do? No, the Widow Mines! Oh, God, that one Marine is just like, oh, my God. Why did I spawn under Commander Shetbird? <laughs> Commander Shetburn, of course, uh, smack talking your commander is is a is treason, and you can be executed via widow mine uh, for 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 smack talking Commander Shetbird. So here comes the SCBs right now. Looks like he's gonna have to go on long distance mine, which really, I mean, he could have lifted off over here. Pro tip of the day: if your opponent has no stuff and it has you contained, just lift off and go somewhere else. Uh, this isn't even a contain though. 24 kills on this cannon, 17 kills on the other cannon. There's the last of the Marines. These are the last Spartans, to be honest. And they get taken out. 25 kills, 21. I think last Spartan has done it. In a mad case of who done it, the answer is last Spartan D. The Widow Mines up here trying to slowly inch forward. Lots of SCVs are getting taken out, though. There was enough SCVs, really, to a long distance mine, I wouldn't say efficiently, but consistently. You can see the income is actually at around three to 400, which is not bad at all. Widow Mines finally ain't taken out. The other Widow Mine cannot be spotted. It can be seen if you look very closely. You don't have to look that close, but it can definitely be seen, but not spotted, so you can't kill it off. And I believe that the last Spartan has actually done it. And really, I feel like with his top three Widow Mine control, last Spartan was able to win. Get it? Because he was the one controlling the Widow Mines. Either way, a round of applause for a last Spartan. And, and a, a, a tear that is shed for Commander Shetbird and his Widow Mines. Oh my god, we have got to go back to that. That is actually like the funniest thing I think I've ever seen. Uh, let's see here. I think it was at the 15, I want to say it was at 15 minutes. Uh, yeah, because Widow Mine wasn't out just yet. Or there was the one Widow Mine, but it was the other two that, that spawned that had the defect. Definitely had the defect there. It's like in any movie when they use auto turrets and the auto turrets turn on them. I'm, I can't think of any movies off the top of my head, but it's happened. It has happened, I'm sure of it. All right, so here we go right here. This is about where it's going to take place. All right, so they run in there. And wait, wait, I want to pause it here. Let's take a look at the amount of units that he has. So 22 Marines is the amount that is on the field here. Overall army supply, 24 to 39. So there is an army supply advantage for Shetbird. He's got 1-1 one, one done. Last Spartan has 1-1 one, one as well. Commander Shetbird should actually win this battle. But this is Bronze League Heroes, so what should happen never actually does happen. So here we go. Keep an eye on the units tab here. All right. Well, we're at 19 Marines right now. Soon to be. <laughs> so it killed eight Marines immediately. And there we go. The other ones get taken out. So from 22 down to four almost immediately. You can see the Marines just getting absolutely destroyed there. Oh, God. Commander Shetbird, you may have lost but you have won in all of our hearts. So a big thanks to Sinvicta. He's the one who sorts through all the replays. I'll put his link down below. Uh, if you want to send any replays, make sure they're good. Send them to huskyreplays at gmail.com. And if you have sent them anywhere else, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, another Gmail account, uh, anything, they will not be looked at. Only huskyreplays at gmail.com. It makes it a lot easier for us to keep track of the replays we've already watched. And uh, Sinvicta does also stream the Bronze League Hero replays sorting process. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, he does that about once a week. So uh, anyways, hope you guys enjoy it. I love you last Spartan D, but I also love good old Commander Shetbird. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HGS Gask here, and it's time for another Bronze League Hero. All right, that's as long as I can uh, drag that intro out. Anyways, spawning up in the top left side, it is going to be the very notorious Boris Borislav. Borislav, I assume, is a very offensive word in Russian, so we're just going to go ahead and go with it. And down the bottom right side is Curly Head, which is a very offensive hairstyle, let's be honest. Anyways, this is going to be a PBT. And, yeah, the whole point of Bronze League Heroes, man, 
Oh god, what do we got going on here with this pro? Well, uh, all right, well, apparently this is the point of Bronze League Heroes, which is to do things that you never see done ever versus Terran. So we are off to a roaring start here. But anyways, the whole point of Bronze League Heroes is to cast the very best of the very worst. The games may be bad, the players may be bad, but my god, it is so good. As uh, this is a true Bronze League level game, I saw on the loading screen, they are both in Bronze League, no placement matches. Nothing silly. No one no one in silver sneaking their way in there. It is 100% a Bronze League Heroes game. Couldn't be more excited. The probe right there going to be scouting out the main base. And almost actually blocked off that barracks by accident. But uh, Boris Lab going to be going for a relatively standard-ish opener. But it does look like Curly Head going to be rocking out this uh, forge. And what we are witnessing right now is a Forge Fast Expand versus Terran. Can't say that I've ever seen this. I did try one time to go a Forge Fast Expand versus Protoss. That did not work out because they can get War Prisms mighty fast. And uh, same thing goes with Boris Lab. Although I think, I wonder if you timed them out. Could you get a War Prism faster or a Medivac faster? Probably the War Prism because the tech is a little bit easier to unlock. Plus, of course, you get Chrono Boost and the War Prism doesn't cost gas. So maybe this will work out slightly better. We do have the Gateway going to be on the way. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Curly Head already dropping down one of those proxy pylons that we all know and love in Bronze League Heroes. So we are going to go ahead and see. Hey, text messages, go away. This is not the time. We have epic, epic strategies unfolding before us. And down goes the pylon right here. It does like the SCP. He's got to scout it right away. With the map hacks of Borislav, I think actually he probably just saw the probe run down there. Because let's be honest, he can see the majority of his base right now. But he is going to have one Marine on the way. Should be able to sit down there. Sending a probe or a couple of SCVs there might be good as well. Oh, the first cannon's on the way. The Marine needs to kill off the probe. Don't let that probe survive. you got to kill the probe. Marine, what are you doing? Don't they train you this in the Academy? Looks like a bunker is going to go down. Is it actually in time, though? 40 seconds for that to complete. The cannon takes an exact amount of time as well to complete. There's already another pilot on the way. The special... Special Marine right here. His headset must not be working. He did not get the command to stop attacking that pylon. All of a sudden, these cannons are going to be getting away. And this is when it is a true Bronze League Heroes game, man. It, it wouldn't be... We wouldn't have it any other way. These four Marines right here are going to get taken out as they try to take down that cannon. Not looking good. The probe is still somehow alive. The SCV, the hero SCV, does not take it out. One hit away from killing the off. That probe actually has two HP. And there's going to be the liftoff. Houston, we have liftoff. As it is going to go ahead and fly on out of there in true Bronze League hero fashion. Could have stopped this cannon rush very easily by pulling off a couple of SCVs, but, uh, or by using the Marine to attack the probe. Oh my god, we got the pylon block on the command center, which is going to attempt now to go to its third base. I think the probe eventually does get taken out. One cannon is on the way uh, down there. We And I don't even think... Would this command center even been in range of these cannons? I honestly don't know. The barracks is apparently in range. So we're going to go ahead and float that one away. But this base has been blocked off by the pylon. We also are going to be having the uh, SCVs now over here. They're waiting for their new home base to land. Is actually going to go ahead and build a factory right now. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing, Curly Head? You're so far in the lead. Don't get cheeky with it. He's got to pull almost every single probe. No, I take that back. He has left two probes at home. So in about five minutes, he'll have enough to build a third probe. He actually already has one on the way, plus enough energy to probe his dad. So he is going to try to end this before it even begins with the comeback. The probe's going to be moving their way all the way across here. We do have SCVs now uh, mining over here. The SCV over here gets completely surrounded. He's like, oh, hey, cool, a bunch of probes. Ah, what are you guys doing? Ah, don't tase me, bro. It looks like the SCVs, though, they actually have a favorable angle. No, no, they don't. The, the probe's getting in way more hits here. But it does look right there. The SCV is going to have to evacuate out of there. We do have the factory now done. What does he have enough money for? Apparently, it's a widow mine. Those fr those units are basically free. And a Curly Head with the aggression. This is like the most aggressive player I've ever seen. Now, normally when a player cheeses, I kind of am like, all right, the defender player, I hope he wins. But in this game, this, this transcends cheese. This goes to a whole new level where it's like, I'm so far in the lead, I'm just going to send all my workers at him. And in some universe, this works. I don't know if it is this universe, but, uh, oh, here we go. We have the first Widow Mine now. Got to be burrowing that right there. I think this is the only Widow Mine he can actually afford. He can only afford one more SCV. Oh, the mule gets taken out. Oh, his only mining income right now gets taken out. Our Terran player is against the ropes. He's got to rely on this one, I think, one Widow Mine to save him here as Borislav 
just being so aggressive. This Widowmine's almost only got that probe right there. It's like, take me. Take me, as uh, he just wants his other buddies to survive. We do have more probes now going to be on the way for Curlyhead. The Widowmine over here trying to burrow, unburrow to get to the good location. The uh, command center right now is going to be burning down. Widowmine trying to chase it around, so we have the ring around the supply depot as they are running away from this Widowmine here. And uh, the Widowmine right there is like, yeah, sup, son, you better get out of here. So the probe's going to... Oh, my God, he's still going... He's going to attack the assimilators with the probes. Deciding not to head back home to have a better economy. He's just going to be building it up from the ground up. We do have some mules being summoned right now. So this mule right here is going to be feeding. Feeding the repair habits of this one over here. As it does repair that command center. Should be able to mine enough at a time here. So currently I believe he is at zero units. He has two mules and excuse me the one widow mine is still alive. The probes over here got the refinery in the red. Look at that Gosu Micro going to be going for the other one as well. Will most likely leave the base as soon as it is in the red here. These these probes, man, they they think they're zealots, but they're not. I mean, they're doing a pretty good job. Here they go. He's going to go ahead and let that one burn down. The probes are there. They even want to kill that flying barracks. They saw it on the minimap. We're like, ah, we got to kill it. But unfortunately, they're not stalkers. They think they're stalkers. They think they're stalkers. Uh, or excuse me, zealots. I just repeated myself. They think they're stalkers. They think they're zealots, but they are not. I think those probes are finally going to return home, feeling very good about themselves. Ever notice that the uh, the side right there, doesn't that kind of look like the Oakley's logo? Am I am I tripping? Is this, uh, is this some marketing strategy by Blizzard? These probes made by Oakley's, so they're completely uh, overpriced. But either way, Widow Mines are going to be the unit of choice now for Boris Lab. Which uh, is such an awesome name. That, that name has to be from something. We'll, we'll figure it out, I'm sure, in the comments later. But uh, either way, Borslav going to be working on getting up these Widow Mines now. So we are going to be transitioning now into, I wouldn't call it the mid-game. I would call it a phase where Curlyhead actually has no units he can attack with anymore without throwing this game away. Uh, so they're going to head back there. Widow Mines are ready to go. I do actually like this choice from Boris Lab because Widow Mines are quite effective in Bronze League Heroes. Uh, quite effective in the lower leagues, but also they're very effective at killing your own units. As we saw recently in a PVT, uh, they will kill all of your own Marines if you're not careful. So it does look at the Widow Mines now. Got to be waltzing their way casually, just going for a stroll here. Casually through the center of the map. And actually, there's no units here to defend for Curly Head. So hopefully, his micro is top three in A. We'll have to wait and see. So there's Widow Mines right there. They're realizing that there's no cannons here because Curly Head spent all of his money on an expansion, which is normally a good thing, but not in this case. The Widow Mines. Dun 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 dun. We'll see if we can actually kill off any of these probes as the Widow Mines just kind of waltz their way right into this mineral line. The probes decide not even to attack. Here we go. Kaboom, baby. Huge hits on those uh, probes. Two kills there, five kills on that one. And the other one is at four, so 11 kills, if I'm not mistaken. I could just bring up this, see how many have been killed off overall. 18 to 15. Oh, my God, the cannon rush has continued. So far, those are only pylons, though, as he was focused elsewhere. That probe, though, if he's not careful with it, will get taken out. And what Widowmine here can take this out as well. The one cannon is on the way. Can he drop down a second cannon? Uh, these. Oh, my God. What are we watching here? Uh, Bronze League heroes, actually. And, oh, God, that, that probe is still alive by running around the factory. Now, there's going to be another cannon. And the, the Widow Mines down here, I believe, getting some more kills. Uh, definitely adding to their kill count there. And the Widow Mines here are going to try and kill off the probe. The cannon is done. The SCVs will be able to kill it off, though. So that one goes down. There's the other, other cannon over here. Workers are actually really good at killing cannons if you get them on there soon enough. Um, and he does manage. I think this one will die as well. It may complete, but it's not going to kill off all these workers by any means. So that cannon is still alive. Widowmines over here, ready to detonate. The expansion here is completely undefended. Now, Borislav needs to move those Widowmines down there. I think we have an observer on the way. Yes, we do. The cannon does indeed get taken out. More Widowmines here to kill off these probes. So right now, he's just got uh, pylons in his base. So maybe he believes in, uh, in green energy. Is trying to use those pylons for his own power. Don't think that's going to work out for Boris Lab, though. Widow Mines are going to be moving down here. Now, if he was pro, what he would do is leave one on the ramp. These probes are going to get out of there, though. And, uh, oh, bro, 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 bro. Oh, it could be devastating if they're not careful. If he had the uh, if he had the Widow Mine upgrade, that would have been GG. The probes are going to be running around now. He's got a bro. He's got a bro. Trying to bro in time. He's got to get a big hit. And, oh, just kidding. By a big hit, I mean one probe there. So not very exciting. And all of a sudden, Curly Head with the micro of a god. Got to be sending up these probes one at a time. Uh, we actually are pushing almost 100 APM here. I'm very surprised, although most of it's just right-clicking these probes around. And uh, there's the Observer, the bold probes going where 
no probe has gone before. Actually, these probes have been there before as they are now used to kill off the Widowmines. What are we watching? What is this game going to be chasing around these poor Widowmines? Oh, that one burned, but he didn't have time to detonate there. Gets taken out right away. This Widowmine is like, I shall avenge my brothers. Why the mechanical unit talks like that is beyond me. Oh, he needs a bro here. Mike get a big hit. Mike get a big hit. Just going to get the one. Just going to get the one. Nice micro there by Curly Head, realizing the threat. And also, you know, I really like this consistent use of not good units. He's going for just workers right now. The Widow Mine's trying to attack the buildings. That, of course, does not work. A cannon got to be out of the way. And you know what they say. Uh, putting cannons behind a wall in is for sissies. So he's got to put in his cannon right now at the front of his base. He's just saying, you know what? No Widow Mine's allowed. Uh, but guess what? The Widow Mines have already arrived. I think they're actually going to be able to run past that. Still no units. Curly Head is fully committed to this Bronze League Heroes build. Um, I guess it's time for a pro tip of the day. If you're in a game for 16 minutes and you have not made a single attacking unit, I think you're doing it wrong. But it does look like the probe's not going to be getting out of there. There's a nice hit right there. And it's going to kill off one more. So Borislav really trying to make this work. The barracks over here apparently under attack. That's pretty random. But the probe's right there. And here we go. We got probes versus Widow Mines once again. And boom! Oh, God, that was so many. Uh, five kills on one, seven kills on the other. We'll eventually kill those off. But, I mean, it, apparently if you attack Widow Mines with workers, the workers die from the last flash damage. So 39 workers killed overall to the mere 19. I also love, though, oh, that's, that's going to add to that total. But I love how the majority of these workers killed by Curly Head have been killed by his workers, which is not something I've ever said, I feel like, in, uh, in any matchup, let alone a PVT here. But those are the Widow Mines and the, the Hellions right now uh, still attempting to clean out these pylons. Apparently, Hellions are not the greatest versus buildings. We do have a supply block over here for Forest Lab, but my god, he is not going to run out of Widow Mines. He has put these on layaway. He has pre-ordered these. This is like an episode of Extreme Couponers, man, where they pre-order a million of them. They just have to wait for them to come in, and that is exactly what he's got to do. The Widow Mine's still chilling out over here. I think he's actually going to get taken out by that Stalker. No Widow Mine's inside the main base. If you wondered, uh, Stalkers do 10 damage per shot to Widow Mine's there. The math is pretty darn simple because Widow Mine's aren't armored, and they have no plus one armor, so math is hard. Anyways, it does look like uh, the pylons eventually... Uh, Got to get taken out here. I actually kind of fell asleep waiting for this, but it does look like it is going to go ahead and eventually get destroyed there. And the Widow Mines, again, I mean, they're trying to be so aggressive. They want to shoot their missiles so bad, but for some reason, they just can't. Oh, my, can you imagine if Widow Mines could attack buildings? Overpowered. But uh, for now, that is not going to be the case here. The Hellions, I mean, they might as well not be able to attack Pylons because this is... Uh. All right, try not to make you guys yawn, but that battle is taking quite some time. And oh my god, Curly Head has made not one, but more than one units that can attack that also cannot mine minerals, which is uh, very impressive. We're all super proud of him down here. He has figured out how to not only make those units, but also warp them in. He's doing a great job. And has a Mothership Core, which why he didn't have this in the first place is really anyone's guess. But uh, we do have the Observer now. Poor Curly Head shouldn't be taken by surprise. That is so many Widow Mines. Uh, the Hellions get a little bit. I feel like the Hellions were supposed to be the escorts here, but they're like, no, let's go to the Botanical Gardens over here and just leave the Widow Mines. Like, the Widow Mines, think of them like children. And this is the uh, this is the field trip in middle school. And and the Hellions are supposed to be the adults who are kind of showing them where to go. Nope, they're just running out to the Botanical Gardens, man. And there we go. That's what happens when you uh, don't pay attention. I'm ready there. He might actually be able to war run the Widow Mines all the way to the base. Might try and burrow them over here. And uh, Mush, of course, should survive, albeit barely. It looks like right now the Widow Mines, though, they're, they're on a march of death. They want to try and kill off everything they can. The pros going to escape. But, oh, my God, they're taking so much damage. Can he kill off the Immortal, the Micro here? Ah, take that one, bro. The Immortal still somehow survives, taking tons of splash damage there. Oh, uh, Widowmines trying to make it up there. But no, the probes, they are so ravenous. These probes born with just a will to kill. It does end up losing more probes there, though. And the supplies are just going all over the place. Uh, Borislav was actually in the lead a great deal with that, with that supply there. Ends up actually throwing it away. Borislav still only on his one base. Curly Head, I mean, he's technically on two bases, but can we really say that? Considering that he has two probes. Oh, now a third probe. 
Now third probe uh, is going to be at that natural, but at this point, I think we may see a lull in action. And by a lull, I don't mean a slowdown. I mean an LOL. Uh, because right now this game has been ridiculous. As you have the Stalker's going to be moving, and the Immortal there feeling like a badass. He's going to be moving across the map. More Stalkers warping in three at a time, which is going to be like doubling the size of his army here at the 21 minute mark. But he's got to go ahead and push forward. But does he micro effectively here? Because in Brawl League Heroes, the best thing about it is that you never know who's actually going to win. I have no idea what's going to be happening right now. Because, yeah, Curly Head may be in the lead. Yes, Curly Head may have a good unit composition. Yes, his economy is good. But that doesn't matter because it's Bronze League and the Widow Mines could kill off everything in one shot if he doesn't micro correctly. Borislav throws down some missile turrets. They're, they're just kind of hanging out right there. No big deal. Might actually be able to use those on the Martian core. Oh, that SCV just wanted to build a new home for himself so bad. He's like that Henri teenager who's like, Mom, I'm going to move out. Eh, screw you guys. You suck. Immediately goes into the real world and gets just destroyed by Protoss. I think we've all been there. But uh, either way, the missile are going to get taken out right away. Really putting the guy out of his misery. Oh, uh, hi, Immortal. There there you go. Just uh, come on in. <laughs> He's going to get taken out there. And uh, the other Widow Mine is getting taken out as well. Keep in mind that Stalker's narrowly outraged. Oh, that was actually pretty cool. That Widow Mine hit. One was in range of the Mothership Core. The other one was in range of the Observer, but the Mothership Core died from the Flash damage. The Widow Mine's right here, though, being aggressive. I think he finally has the upgrade. Yes, he does. They do burrow in one second. Big hits coming up. And no, this is not uh, its not hit music. Like, wow, that's what I call music. 365. It, or now. Or whatever, whatever the hell those are called. But uh, either way, he's got to go ahead and burrow these. And that should be it for a lot of those. Stalkers getting taken out. The Immortal as well. Stalker, take a cue from everyone else and just leave the game. You do not want to be controlled by Curly Head right now versus this many Widow Mines. No, I think that one Stalker is going to survive, though. We still got the cannons over here. I like to imagine that cannons can talk, and they're just sitting over here talking like, well, uh, anything to shoot over here, guys? Uh, no, not really. And they turn their little heads. They should have little googly eyes on them. Oh, my God, that would be so cute. Like, uh, I wonder if uh, I wonder if Borslav is going to send anything over here. What do you guys think? Uh, no, no, nothing really going on over here. Hey, you guys, uh, you want any food? You want any takeout? Uh, I can go pick it up. Wait, no, I can't because I don't have legs. I don't even know what I'm talking about. But it does like the Widow Mines right now. Gotta be, they do have legs, oddly enough. They're going to be waddling their ways all the way over here. And these Stalkers better get out of there. He's giving him so much time to retreat those Stalkers. He wants to get the surround here. Treating these Widow Mines like Zerglings and being just as effective here. Oh, look at the sick wallet with the cannons here. No Widow Mines for you. Oh, that poor Stalker. I think that Stalker will survive. Oh, my God, is that the same Stalker still? I feel like it is, but maybe not. Uh, he's going to try and kill off more of these Widow Mines with the sick Gosu cannon block there. I also love how in, uh, in Bronze League Heroes, there's always that one guy who has like 4,000 resources stockpiled. That guy is currently Curly Head, and uh, he's, he's using his money well. He's spending it on two cannons to lock himself in his own base. Uh, I think that this is still a, a everything tight wallet. If Zerglings randomly spawned on this map, they couldn't get in there. Uh-oh, with the bad rally point, though. Widow Mine's getting taken out. Might be able to burrow this one in time. Nope. That Widow Mine's just like, no, I don't, I don't want to live anymore. Uh, I will say, though, the dedication of Curly Head on that worker tech for so long is outstanding. Uh, he, he deserves one of those, like, little... You guys remember, like, middle school when they would give out, like, award ceremonies? They'd be like... Uh, best backpack and like uh, they, they give you stupid awards to make you feel great about yourself uh yeah those widow mines would have won like you tried uh like best death animation or something is what they would have got but uh, either way we do have the widow mines getting come here and these guys we're gonna run out of those certificates man the best death and best death animation certificates we are out as so many widow mines have officially been destroyed if you ever wonder what the inside of widow mine looks like well, now you know. And also, you should probably think about more interesting stuff. But it looks like this pylon here putting up a fight as uh, these stalkers have attempted to kill off this pylon several times. This is going to be third attempt. Uh, there he goes. Finally, Colossus having to step in to make uh, make that happen. And, oh, my God, we actually have a drop going on, and I missed it. The Widow Mine's over here. Oh, my God, I was so distracted. Seven kills and one kill. Uh, oh, and a big hit there. Honestly, I thought the micro was so bad that like the, the possibility of a drop was just non-existent. Oh god, the Widow Mines are here. Can he burrow? He's got to try and make it happen. The Colossus has got to be careful. Not often will you see a Colossus die to a Widow Mine and uh, not going to be seeing it just yet. The Widow Mines here trying to make it happen, but all of a sudden Curly Head pulling the micro of a Gosu GSL champion. And it looks like the Widow Mines will get taken out. Some detonations on the workers, which I mean that is a good thing. 
as uh, Borislav is ahead in the supply right now, 61 to 43. There's a, a random Void Ray there. So Curly Head, he's diversifying his tech. He's got his first flying unit, other than the Mothership Core and the Observer, but his first real true Stargate unit. Uh, more Widow Mines got to be moving out right now. And I love how there's the one Planetary Fortress here, which is protecting a mule. There's another expansion over here, which is being turned into Orbital. This is going to be used to uh, have one SCV mining. But it all comes down to the Widow Mines. We have no Thors. We have no Sea Shakes. Widow Mines, you got to get out of there, man. You got to get out of there. Decides to charge up ahead. Uh, we'll lose the Mothership. Nope. Nope. I guess those uh, Widow Mines here were saying, you know what? We've killed enough Mothership cores today. We'll let this one survive. As uh, right now, there was a lead for Boris Lab, but now the lead is back in Curly Head. How, how many times have we switched leads? as far as supplies are concerned. Overall units lost is 12 resources. Wait, wait, something's dying over here. It was 12 resources away. The, uh, looks like the Void Race should get taken out here. Yep, two Widow Mines gonna be able to finish that off. I cannot believe after all of this shenanigans, it, it, 12 resources is what separates these two players. I think losing the, yeah, losing the Void Race is gonna change it a little bit. But uh, not a whole lot. So now that we're 29 minutes into a game, still no idea who's going to win. This game is actually one of the most ridiculous Bronze League heroes so far. Uh, just, I mean, think about how this game started. It started with a cannon rush into a pylon block on the natural, into a probe army marching their way across the map, into a mass widow mine play, into I don't even know what this game is anymore play, which is always... Always outstanding watch. The Widow Mines here, though, they are losing their effectiveness. It's like those sticky hands where they're really awesome at first, but then, you know, you go to the beach and you're like, I'm going to sticky hand the sand. It'll be sweet. No, your sticky hand is ruined. So th that's exactly what this is like, guys. All right, so we do have the Widow Mines got to be moving out. And I uh, got to go ahead and burrow them at, I assume, the third. There's really not a whole lot here, though, so unless he misclicks that. The one planetary is like, all right. I got these giant guns. The Void Ray is flying quite low. I can even aim up. You see that? How it can aim up? Uh, I'll go ahead and shoot the Void Ray. Nope. Can't do it. Blizzard won't allow it. As uh, the Vikings here should be able to take it out. No, the Vikings give up as well. Really? Really? I feel like Borislav is mostly a pacifist. He just loves playing with remote control cars. He doesn't realize that those remote control cars actually kill things. Uh, as every other unit, I don't think he's attacked with anything other than Widow Mines. So he's trying to make it work. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if that actually happens or not. It does have a, a, a mine doubt. I can't, can I call it? Is this a main? Is this his main base? We'll call it that, I guess. So that base is almost mined out. He does have his natural, is what we're calling it now. And his third base way over here, which uh, now is up to three SCVs mining. It does look like the Void Ray going to try and, I guess, take out. Oh, he thinks there's still a refinery there. There's not a refinery there. Just, uh, just a heads up. You killed that refinery already. It's not there. As Void Rage is like, oh, yep, confirmed. It's not there. Husky was right. But oh no, the Widow Mines is going to lose all of them. Oh god. Oh no, I think he threw it all away. And he's still just making Widow Mine Viking, which is not an ideal unit composition versus Stalker Colossus. And there's going to be the GG from Boris Lab. I love the anticlimactic ending. It makes it that much better where he had all those Widow Mines. Actually, let's just go back. Let's just go back in time for a moment. Which, uh, we're only going back in time, like, 10 seconds. So, really, I mean, that's not that exciting. Can you imagine if you had, like, the superhuman abilities and all you could do is go back in time, like, 4 seconds. So, you'd be forever stuck getting ran over. Just like what happened... Oh, wait, I missed it because I was talking. I was running my mouth too much. Sorry, this is, this is a very common problem. My doctor said that I'm never going to get over it. All right, there we go. Uh, I don't want... Okay. So, we had lots of Widow Mines here. He had 86 supply to 93. Army supply is actually basically tied. 52 to 57. Worker supply is tied. 36 to uh, 36 there. So 65 to 52. And unfortunately, wait, wait, pause, 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 pause. Let's look at uh, Borislav's view. So he's over here macroing like a champ. Look at this. He's dropping a mule. He's building SCVs. He's like, oh, God, I'm losing everything. And he was right. That is true. That is uh, not good for him. And APM here. Both players managed to break 100 APM. So great job here to Boris Lab, giving us an entertaining game. But in the end, Curly Head's lack of units until the 30-minute mark is what ended up carrying him to victory. This has been Bronze League Heroes, guys. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy it, well, you really have no soul because that was amazing. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello friend, this is ATS Kiaski here, and as you can tell, this is not exactly my usual setup. I'm kind of trapped in a box right here. Ah, get me out of here. Uh, anyways, uh, you can tell.
This is not my normal surroundings. I'm actually in a hotel room. I'm in the Northwest visiting the good old family. So, uh, yeah, that's the thing. I'm out, I'm out of state right now, but you know what? I do not let that ever stop me from making videos. So this is going to be a Bronze League Heroes. It's a little bit of a special edition, though, because number one, you get the webcam. You get my sexy, sexy face, or my horrific face, depending if you're the rest of the world and not my mother. But uh, anyways, it is going to be a TVZ, and I am casting this on my laptop. So just keep that in mind that uh, it is on my laptop, and the audio quality is not going to be the best in any way. I, I'm using a different microphone here. You can see my microphone right here. Look at this. This, this... This is not my normal, this is not my normal microphone. Definitely not my normal microphone. So we're, we're going to try and use this anyway, so we'll see, uh, we'll see exactly how this turns out. Um, I can't get as loud as I normally like because uh, I'm kind of in a hotel. There are pretty thin walls. I kind of heard the, the people next to us doing something that I don't want to disclose on the internet. But uh, either way, let us go ahead and figure this game out. Spawning down the bottom right side... It is going to be entrusting. We're going to be entrusting in him that this hopefully is a good game. And his opponent, down the bottom left side for Bronze League Heroes, it is going to be Sir Roy Gbiv. Sir Roy Gbiv. I don't know exactly what that is. I'm sure it's from something. But hey, I'm extremely uncultured. I'm, uh, I'm actually the most uncultured person that I think I know. And I don't know very many people because I'm uncultured. Boom! Roasted. Either way, we're going to be having a wall right here. This drone is like, I'm not even going to fight anybody. I'm not going to try and kill the SCVs. I'm not going to try and bust down the supply depot. I, oh, nope, now he goes. Now he's got his boxing gloves on. He's going to go straight for the supply depot. I guess this is one of the cutest things I think in all of StarCraft is watching drones try to attack things. Because they're just like, ah, oh, I can't, I can't mine this. How do I, how do I take this back to the base? That's all I'm good at. And got to begin working down that supply depot. Which actually... Actually, this is kind of a pro tip of the day. You guys ready for this knowledge bomb right now? It's going to rock your world. Um, actually, doing this is such a good idea because a lot of times in the lower level of play, they won't repair the supply depot. So later, if you try and do a bust or something like that, it's actually weakened more than uh, usual. And if nothing else, if you can't get the drone in anyways... Oh, oh, the drone does get in though. The supply depot a little bit late. Did not get the memo that he needs to be uh, going for that. We have very few units here for entrusting. Uh, I guess you could say that his build is quite entrusting. Instead of interesting. Alright, whatever. whatever. I, don't, I don't know if having my face on camera makes the really bad puns that much worse. Uh, they probably do. It probably does. But either way, the drone right now has managed to keep alive for quite some time here. Actually around 80 APM. Not too bad at all. So uh, it does look like the supply depot. Not not actually repaired here, which could be a huge deal. So we have more lings gonna be on the way. I assume that entrusting is going for a bane ling of some sort, but I feel like he's making way too many lings and not enough anything else. Uh he's got a lot of guys on gas, but he's only got five drones on minerals now. I'm not sure exactly what you can actually do with this. Two more drones are being constructed. The supply depot actually getting repaired as well. So we should be seeing a very aggressive game out of entrusting, which is quite interesting. Okay, I'm done. I'm done with that one, okay? Is never going to happen again. You guys do not even have to worry about it. So we'll see. We'll see if Sir Roy Gbiv can hold this up. He does have the three Marines here. A lot of times you will see lower level players uh, actually go for a bunker right now, which, you know, versus a Baneling Bust is actually a good idea. So that's why scouting is going to be important. And actually, we do have a Baneling Bust uh, definitely going to be happening here. So the Baneling Bust is going to be on the way. The Lings over here are just taking a little peppering of damage. They're like, well, we can't really attack, so let's just go ahead and get shot. Right? Is that what you guys did in high school? I don't know. Like, well, we're bored, so let's go get shot at. But uh, either way, there's it. The Jack Larvas actually aren't that bad. I've seen far, far worse, that's for sure. What is bad, though, is the amount of workers he actually has. I don't think he's going to be able to make all that many Banelings. He basically has no money. Baneling Nest is done. Three more drones on the way. The uh, the terrifying two... Nope, now three Banelings going to be morphing in. There's going to be Baneling number four here. So we'll see if interesting, uh, interesting can actually do anything with this. Uh, keep in mind, the supply depots do have 400 HP. And they got one little armor. Not sure if that makes a big difference in Baneling Bust or not. But here comes the two Banelings. Uh, well, I will say that two Banelings not going to be nearly enough. That is that is for absolute sure. Versus uh, buildings, 80 damage there. So he's have at least five Banelings. But he's only got four. He's only got four Banelings. Let me go again there. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, okay, well, he did get the depot, but he didn't have enough DPS on those banelings. Uh, maybe, maybe having my face cam is not a good idea. I'm just going to look like a big old giddy goober up here. A giddy goober? What the hell is that? But either way, he kills out the depot. Uh, Sir Roy G. Bib is just like, all right, well, I'm just going to... 
Just gotta go ahead and rebuild that now. So overall, you guys lost here 575 to 100. Uh, well, I will, I, I think we all know what time it is. It's time for the pro tip of the day, which is, uh, number one, don't double scout with overlords here. This is just bad news. But number two, if you're gonna do a baneling bust, at least have five banelings, because that did not work out so good for him. We do have the tech lab going to be on the way for Roy G. Biv. I also love how Roy G. Biv is joining the absolute standard bronze hero build, which is just fake marines. Just just pure marines all the time. And uh, he's he's content with that. We'll see if he makes any marauders or gets any upgrades. Ah, oh, combat shields on the way. He has enough for stim as well if he wants it right there. Behind behind door number two is stim pack if, it, if he wants it. The power can be yours. And there it is. Stim pack is going to be on the way. More marines being constructed as well. These lings for entrusting are definitely ready to go. Uh, you know what's not? Not ready to go. Number one, the fact that my nose itches so bad that I cannot hide this uh, away from camera anymore. But uh, he doesn't have another base. And guys, remember what I said, and what I will always say, and I'm going to continue to say, uh, if you find yourself as Zerg stuck on this, on this lack of bases on one base here, probably time to go ahead... Oh my god, he morphed two Bailings all the way back at home. Oh my god, these Bailings have to waddle their way all the way over. They're gonna show up way late to this party. And now, and now, interesting, he's going to be going for all Banelings with only one Zergling for DPS. We'll see if he can make it work. He's going to have to get some fatty hits in uh, on those Marines. We do have more Lings going to be on the way. Does he have Zergling speed? Of course he doesn't. Because that costs additional gas, which just means less Banelings. Interesting, man. Really wanting to make this happen. Really. He's, he's just like, oh, this is going to work. This is going to work, guys. There's going to be some Banelings, some Lings mixed in. No Zergling speed, so we have to delay the push for an extremely long time right now. And uh, we shall see exactly how Bronze League hero -y this game is about to get. I mean, the Marines are, are definitely just chilling here. They are, they're pretty clumped up. So, like, one Baneling hit right here could end everything. Oh, especially if the Marines move down. They could be in a lot of trouble here. Because keep in mind that his, his micro is probably not going to be up to par. But here we go. The Baneling's got to try and chase us down. The Marines realizing we have got to get the hell out of there. And uh, thankfully for them, the Baneling's turn around. I think the Marines would have been able to escape either way. But the overall units lost definitely eight times as much for interesting. These links have finally arrived. Sure as hell took them long enough. You're going to be sitting in the links first. Unfortunately, that doesn't mean that the Banelings are going to be doing all that much. Here comes the Banelings. No, no, no! Don't attack the bears! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What are you doing? All right. Well, this is probably the most inefficient use of units I think I have ever seen. 1,900 to 400 at this point. More Banelings on the way, though. Interesting saying if it's broke... Don't buy a new one, just keep using it. And uh, we'll see if that ends up paying off big for him or not. As more Banelings are on the way, the Lings have been running up here. And this is really the last chance. The last chance for Interesting to do... Oh no! The AI! Oh, that's the worst feeling ever. That is the worst feeling ever there. He's going to end up losing those units. The barracks didn't even die. The constructing... <laughs> Oh my god, he left the game. Interesting. All right, look. I feel like interesting may need a little bit of coaching here. I love the fact that he tried to go for the bailing bus, but that is the first time. that I think that that is actually the very first time I've ever seen a game where somebody loses... When their opponent never moves out of their base at all. Absolutely hilarious stuff there. And uh, honestly, I just want to test out my laptop. Uh, the recording seemed okay. Maybe a little bit laggy there. But again, I am traveling, guys. Uh, so having fun. Hanging out. Being in a hotel room by myself. Casting StarCraft. You know, not a lot of things are really different when I travel. Um, so yeah. I, th I think that's going to be it. If you guys would like to send your uh, Bronze League heroes, send them to huskyreplays at gmail.com. Sometimes I'll pick long games. Sometimes games like this. Uh, Sinvicta will pick out. I think Sinvicta picked this one out just because he knew that it would make me laugh. So, uh, it did. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And of course, I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HGS Cask here and it is time for Bronze League Heroes. Now, uh, my voice is a little bit tired from the 4th of July. Lots of yelling going on during the 4th of July. And it's not so much that I was yelling like a maniac, it's more that everyone else was and I was just trying to talk to the people next to me. But regardless, we are going to power through anyways. Of course, here at Bronze League Heroes, we are going to cast the very best of the very worst. And uh, the games may be bad, the players may be bad, but my god, it is so good. Uh, let's go ahead and introduce our players right away as this game is getting underway. Down in the bottom left side, it is going to be Genova as the Red Protoss and his quite stellar opponent in the bottom right side, just now figuring out how to build supply depots. It is going to be Zalzul. 
So it is Zalzul versus Genova, which sounds kind of like uh, the two main characters of an anime. Uh, what, which we're totally fine with that. Those like the probes can't go ahead and move out right after Pylon. That is completely standard-ish. He did actually send it at kind of at a weird time, but uh, we'll we'll pretend that it's going to be standard. But uh, anyways, it is so good to be back. So, so happy to be back at my computer instead of trying to make things on a laptop. Anytime you try and make stuff on a laptop, it uh, it's always a pain in the butt. Like, the laptop gets... Uh, you know, like 80 frames per second playing StarCraft 2 regularly. As soon as you turn on the recording software, it's like, bleh, 15. Uh, but that is because XSplit is quite a demanding thing. Uh-oh, what's this probe up to? This probe is up to no good. We do have a forge on the way, but this isn't exactly... Wait, does he know where the player spawns? Does he... I, I, don't, I don't think he's aware of where the player actually spawns this map. So he's figuring this map out along with us. As, uh, <laughs> yep, that probe is so confused. So this may be a, uh, a, a, a heavily delayed cannon rush, but you know, in Bronze League Heroes, we wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, you know, the players don't know exactly what the map is shaped like. They don't know where they're going to spawn. They, they don't really know build orders either, and that is why we love them oh so very much. The probe got slip right on in here. Zalzul should be able to witness this probe uh, getting inside the main base, and he does. As the probe right there, really not going to be able to do anything. There's going to be the gateway tech following it up. We also got the assimilator going to be on the way. Uh, okay. Well, that is, uh, that's, that's one way to do it. If you scout the wrong way and you realize that they've spotted your probe, might as well just go ahead and drop that pylon down the middle. Now, I do feel kind of bad for Zalzul because he just scouted there, but, uh, didn't scout it in time. And, oh, there we go. That, uh, that base is going to be fully scouted here. As he has given that that SCV many commands on scouting that base out. We'll see if he can fulfill every single one of them. And uh, here he goes. He's like, he's trying to remember. He's got his laundry list of things to do. All right, so we're going to go over here. Then we got to go scout. And then he cancels them anyways. Ah, typical, typical Bronze League players, man. Giving you a bunch of orders, then just canceling them and making you do the regular move command. Oh, God, he gets surrounded by the probes. A little bit of overkill there by Genova. You know, I never, I never, or I always wonder, and I never know, when you're scouting your opponent, here, here comes the cannons. All right, cannons on the low ground versus a Terran player. Uh, well, we'll see if it pays off in a big way. It's a, uh, it's a bold strategy, to say the most. That's really all I, I can, like, even stretch it out to say. And we actually do have a, a uh, factory on the way already for Zalzul. Or maybe Zalzul sounds kind of like, uh, like a bad guy from, like, a Super Nintendo game. But uh, we do have more pilots. And the gateway, because why the hell not? Why not just throw down random buildings over here? He does have the gateway on the way. Uh, no gas going to be coming in. Uh, Genova is Chrono boosting out workers. He does have 20 workers on the minerals, 21 now on the field overall. And he's got some guys inside the gas. All three good to go. Now, I want to see how does this develop. I mean, what is the transition out of this? He has made a conscious decision that this is the way to go. Uh, when in doubt, more cannons. That's always a good one. And uh, there goes Spidey Poke. Going to go ahead and raise that one on up. Barracks on the way. You know, Zelzul's build actually isn't that wacky. He's actually got a factory. Uh, Widow mine this early. I don't know about that. But uh, three barracks in a factory, you can at least afford to produce off of those while on one base. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. And another gateway down here on the low ground. So he is rocking it. Where are you going? Oh, my God. He's not going to expand there, is he? Is he, is he going to expand there or is he just scouting? I feel like he's scouting there. There's going to be the scan. And Zalzul's got to be going. All right. Uh, well, mm, where's his money going? Where is his money going? Indeed, Zalzul has no idea what's going on. He scans him and is probably like, aha, this guy has nothing. I'm going to be just going to go ahead and waltz out my window mine. Oh, no, the cannons. Oh, so he walks those right into that cannon line. But, hey, at least he didn't march his entire army down there. Not that he really has much of an army to march. Uh, there's like six Marines. They're making a, a triangle shape. We do have stim pack. No, excuse me, combat shields on the way. I just assume that it's stim pack because that's what the average player gets. And as Elzul says, serious, there's the scan to see everything that's going on. We do have a Cybernex Core on the way. It is over there. And uh, the probe still chilling out over here. Not quite sure what his job is other than to look cool. He's like, yep, I built that base, man. You know, the, the, the probe that designed this base down here Probably also designed Los Angeles. Just a horrible layout, not really that effective, not really that good at much of anything, but hey, we're all proud of it anyways, as it is going to be hanging out over there. Cybernetics Core going to be almost done, plus one armor. Such a random upgrade for him to be getting off of this many bases. And uh, what is what is uh, Zalzul up to? Well, he's managed to bank $500 already. 
which is great. Uh, does he decide to go for a sea shank? A sea shank would be the absolute best choice. Wait, he doesn't have that much gas. Yeah, you know, he is mining gas, but only 10 SCVs on uh, minerals, and it should be a sea shank. Please be a sea shank. Wait, what did he spend his gas on? He spent his gas on something else. He's getting a reactor on the starport. All right, that's not going to really help you break a contain, but I guess you could go for drops or something. There's another scan. He's like, yep, still there, as uh, those elves is going to be hanging out. These guys, they, they're, oh, I feel like they're from a small town that no one takes very seriously. And that is, the, really, that is what it is. Like, really, you, you can either work down at the cannon factory or you go to college and move out and never visit home again. Those, those are the two options for uh, Camp Genova over here. That is the official town name, too, Camp Genova, as uh, he has placed that right there. And really, I mean, this is typical Bronze League Hero stuff. I, I'm kind of getting into this. Neither player has expanded. Neither player has moved out. One player is currently heavily supply blocked. And uh, one player has way more money than they should. So that is the sign of a true Bronze League Heroes game. As uh, we do have Stalkers now on the way. Also another sign of a true Bronze League Heroes game is no Warp Gate research. We are, uh, we are 10 minutes into the game. Hasn't even thought about it. Yep, there's a scan. Yep, still there. And I also love how he's not using mules. He's like, nah, 10... 10 SCVs is a good round number. I mean, once you get like 23, it's really hard to keep track. But here comes, I'm just going to call it a doom drop. Uh, because really, this is his entire army, which normally is a lot more terrible. What is this? <laughs> Why is that so far away? You, I don't think I've ever seen a player place it that far away. Once again, he's probably going to start mining minerals from over here and uh, bring them all the way over there. But regardless, we do have the medevacs going to go ahead and drop right on top of these four cannons that are placed here. No! No, look at that micro! What's his APM at? His 35 APM directed at saving this drop. And he's got to drop right into this line. No, those probes, I'm sorry. This is not a good idea. This is not a good idea, probes. Don't think there's going to be any Terran casualties. Uh, kaboom, baby, indeed. All Oh my god, all those probes just got taken out. 24 workers got killed off by Zelzul's Doom Drop. But keep in mind that Zelzul is the bad guy from a Super Nintendo game, so he's expected to come out in an early lead here. But uh, we'll see how his micro pans out. And at this point, uh, Genova, what are his options? Well, first option is to mine some minerals. So should probably probably go ahead and get on that. Uh, anytime, any, I mean, anytime you feel like, whoa, he's actually moving in there, trying to kill off the Siege Egg, but he's going for the Depot, actually. So at the AI, he's like, you know what, this AI is too confusing. I'm just going to kill the depot and be done with it. He has got to try and kill off the main base. He actually has enough here to kill off this sea shank. And all of a sudden, he is in the production line of Zalzul. I don't know if this is actually a base race or not, or just a, a who can hurt themselves the fastest race, which is the typical Bronze League Hero stuff. And actually, uh, Zalzul is like, screw it, man. I'm going home. Uh, unfortunately, there's really nowhere to land this bad boy. I don't know exactly where he hopes to land it. Maybe he'll fly it all the way across the map. The Marine and Marauder trying to hold the honor of Zalzul, but that honor has long been lost. Uh, the SCVs, I mean, they really have nowhere to go, so this is going to be a shooting gallery. This is like playing paintball with your friend who's in, like, a pro team, and you're just there to have fun, and uh, you feel like the SCV just getting massacred by the tryhard stalker. But anyways, those SCVs really have nowhere to go. The command center really has nowhere to go either, uh, but we got the Doom Drop. We got the Doom Drop. Ready to go. Actually, I feel like the medevacs are just kissing at this point. I don't really know. No, I don't really know what's up with them. There they go. And they're going to unload those units right there. And apparently achievements are disabled until further notice. Good to know. Oh, oh apparently. Oh, and, and we're back. And we're back. Achievements hopefully will return soon. And, oh, was that it? Oh, uh, you know, you know it's a good game when uh, I'm more focused on the achievements being unlocked than the actual game. But right now the main base is going to be destroyed. Uh, I will say, though, Zalzul realizing that Terran buildings can fly floating it away. And you may say, Husky, of course Terran building supply. Well, you evidently haven't watched Bronze League Heroes because this, this is Bronze League Heroes. I can almost take the Nexus off the screen. It's so far away from the mineral line. But uh, for now, still no rally points out. Maybe Genova is like playing StarCraft 1. He just doesn't know that he accidentally loaded up StarCraft 2. He's like, no, rally points overrated. Oh, there he goes. He does go ahead and finally do that. More probes are going to be on the way. Still no Cybernetics Core. The main base has been cleaned out, though. Now, at this point... Genova should win. Uh, Zalzul not landing his uh, his production here. Uh, whoa, there we go. Everyone's apparently messaging me now that Battle.net's being uh, absolutely ridiculous. You know what? We're just going to power through. 
all these technical difficulties, all these really, really bad maneuvers, I think it really brings the whole package together. But uh, anyways, those are the stock results here. Got to be scouting around. I love how he could go kill him right now, but he doesn't know where he's at. He's like, all right, well, I scouted down here. I, I, I could have swore I saw a command center fly over here. Now he's got to scout over here. Not really going to be able to spot exactly. Oh, he does actually find these, though. Will be able, he wants to go for the barracks, I feel like, first. Uh, anything that's going to come out of the factory is not that big of a deal whatsoever. And uh, hang on, let me let me do this. Apparently, it got rid of my busy. It it just doesn't it doesn't even want to work anymore. But uh, thank you, Dizzy, for your kind words. As the stalkers now going to be moving on out, and uh, we'll actually uh oh uh oh you got to be careful over here as uh, the stalkers going to try and take out the medevac. And do we see a guardian shield or a force field, or are they bronze league sentries where they don't use any of their abilities? We're about to find out. Some of them are actually ah, there's a guardian shield after most units have died. One medevac does go down, though. The other medevac getting dangerously low. He could snipe it if he really wants to, trying to focus it down. No, he's going to go for the Marines right here. And the last second force field, which doesn't really touch anything. That's fine. As it does like this army will be cleaned out. All of a sudden, Genova realizing I should probably spend these, like, 1,000 almost resources that I have in the bank. He does do it by queuing up four zelts. And, you know, warp gate research, warp gate shmeesherpsh. That's right. That's something you don't need to get. All right. We do have cannons going down. Uh, so if that army decides to walk into them, maybe it'll end up working out. But I guess he's got his lower ramp covered. So, you know, it's not like those units can load inside of a flying uh, ship that could load them, uh, unload them elsewhere. But, hey, either way, we are going to be having... Oh, excuse me, we are going to be having the uh, first Supply Depot for Zalzul going to be coming on up. And he still has not killed off this main base, although really what is there to kill? Let's take a look at the Structures tab. Uh, 11 cannons overall. I think that's more than uh, the Terran player. Yep, more than the Terran player has combined as far as buildings. Army Supply is 10 to 8. And he's still dropping cannons. He's like, you know what? You know what? 13 cannons is not enough in this situation. I'm going to go ahead and add on two more. And that's exactly what he's going to be doing right now, as those are going to be on the way. And uh, it's time for a pro tip of the day. If you find that your supply is 30 in the late game and uh, your opponent has nothing, probably don't want to be going for cannons. It might ideally be better to go for some units. So that's going to be the pro tip of the day. And uh, Zelzul saying, are you done? I I don't know what that means. Maybe he's as blown away by the cannons as I am. Wait, did he scan it or something? Hang on, let, let's take a let's take a gander at what he's seen. No, he hasn't seen this base over here. And if he did, he would probably cry. I I'm still I'm still holding back tears myself watching this just beautiful, beautiful long distance needless mining. But anyways, we have the side next we're gonna be out of the way. We very wait, wait, there's a scan. Right? He's scanning the cannons again! Alright, I mean Zalzul, I love you. But this may be an ideal time to use mules. Uh, you currently have four workers. One of them, which is building supply depots. The other ones are mining. At least he did land his command center in the correct spot. But really don't want to be scanning that location. Oh, my God. That, that is another cannon. Genova, you are throwing away this massive lead you have by building cannons. See, this is the problem with cannon rushing in the first place. Is, is you know, you get used to winning by building buildings and nothing else. You're like, hey, the best way to win this in this situation is going to be a cannon rush. And then the cannon rush doesn't work out. And you're like, hey, the best way to win in this situation is a cannon contain. And you feel so, so smart. You put on your monocle and top hat. And then when that doesn't work, you're like, all right, the only way to win in this situation is a cannon contain on myself. And that's exactly what he's doing here. He does have the Twilight Castle. There's going to be the scan by Zelzu. I love how he does. He, he floats all the other buildings over here and then puts the other one in solitary confinement. So he's down here. And Zelzu is going to move out. And I, the problem with these cannons is that they don't cover the entire base. I mean, they cover the majority of the base, but not where the workers are long distance mining, which is something that's very silly for me to say. But we do have the Twilight Council on the way. We do have some stalkers on the way. Still with no warp gate research even thought about at this point. Maybe this game is actually from three years ago. And no one was really using Warp Gate back then. Uh, maybe that's when it was from, because I have no other explanation. It does look, oh, he's going to unload them over here. Probably the worst choice you could make. Oh, my guys! so hope they run up that ramp. Oh, no, the army's in position as well. There's going to be the stim and the run up the ramp. They're trying to take out the pylon. I don't think it's going to work, though. Oh, Zalzul, you've done it again. You have Zalzuled yourself, which uh, is, is not something that's very pleasant. And he's almost reached his maximum amount of SCVs we've seen this game. Uh, currently sitting at eight. Two more, and he'll be at the most we've ever seen on a mineral patch. Oh, got to be careful with that medevac. 
does manage to narrowly, narrowly save that. And well, this is this is a very special game, guys. This is this is really showcasing the true talent of Bronze League, and I I love it. I I, I love it every second of it. It is one of my greatest guilty pleasures. And it's not even that guilty. It just makes you feel good. And now there are nine SCVs here mining. So his income is going to be skyrocketing. I'm still trying to decide what he meant by are you done. I I, I don't know. Like, what does that mean? Is it like, well, you haven't left yet, but are you done? I, I don't really know. The Zelts here, they're going to be doing a, a little choo-choo train of, of death because they are Bronze League hero zealots. Bronze League zealots, man. They are the worst type of zealot. God, they're so annoying. They're like those frat kids. Uh, young money kids, man. They just don't know what they're doing. They're used to getting what they want, but unfortunately, this is the real world in StarCraft 2 where you will die. Uh, but we do have the starport once again with another reactor. I don't know how he plans to afford double medevacs, but hey, this is Bronze League, so they'll figure it out. Uh, we do have Stalkers, Zealots, and the one sentry again still moving out. Zealot legs on the way, surprisingly enough. I feel like a Dark Shrine might be a good idea, but at this point, Genova has a double supply lead now. He's at 61 supply to 35, so a little bit less than double, pretty close. And the barracks over here has got a tech lab on it. He's still not going to fly over there. He's going to make all those units spawn. That, that is going to be so confusing for the guys in the barracks. They're like, all right, I went through basic training. I'm on this distant planet. I don't know exactly what's going on, but uh, we'll, uh, we will see as he has to walk his way all the way across. And uh, here comes the attack right now as Genova going to try and go up the ramp. And I don't know if that's a very good idea. Definitely is not versus Marines. Oh, God, the Marines turn around and kill one of their own Marines as the Zealots got to be moving out. And by moving out, I mean running slowly, painfully slowly across the map. And they do actually manage to survive. My life for ire. This time it was actually the Stalkers who did not learn their lesson, and they're the ones who get taken out. Gonna go ahead and boogie on out. Oh my god, we have an expansion. Genova almost lines it up this time. I mean, I, I feel like by his fourth expansion, he is going to, to place the perfect nexus, and it is going to be a glorious day for all of us, as uh, it's not it's not this time, though. So Genova, better luck next time, as uh, placing that nexus down is not going to be very easy for him, but that's okay. As Mavix can be moving out, he does have a siege tank in here, the first siege tank of the game. Keep in mind, siege tanks do outrange cannons. Uh, the probe over here, uh-oh, uh-oh, Nexus might actually get taken out right now. Where's Genova's units? He does have 14 zealots, and they do have zealot legs. That is the important. He has managed to make all of this off of two gateways. These gateways have been working overtime right now, and uh, we'll see if these are true Bronze League zealots. You got to try to really with just the attack move. He should be able to pull this off. Goodbye, Siege Tank. That was his only way. Oh, but he did kill the pylon. He's got to be dropping right in the main mineral line. Oh god. Oh god. Where's the photon overcharge? What are you doing, Mothership Core? What are you doing, Zealots? What are you doing, Genova? Oh my god. Well, all those probes are going to die. Uh, well, I guess building those pylons was the most important thing. Oh my god, that medevac could go down, and it does. That is not the one with units inside, though. Genova's saying, you know what, Husky? I really want to up the ante on this game. I really want to showcase my skills later in the macro phase. So it is now time for me to lose all my workers again. So it does look like Zalzul. Uh, is he going to lose this medevac? Is that, th what is the math on this? I don't know if that medevac's going to escape or not. The Stalker just chasing it all the way across the map. Oh, but the Stalker is so dumb. You can't walk there, Stalker. You can't fly. Oh, he does allow that medevac to narrowly escape. Uh, what is what is Zalzul up to? He has managed to get 12 SCVs. Uh, I, I'm sure his entire family is very proud of him. He's the first one in his uh, in his family. He is a third generation Terran, but a first generation getting more than 10 workers. So very, very well played there. More SCVs could be constructed soon as well. And uh, not getting supply blocked or anything like that. So Zalzul just hanging out. Oh, God. Oh, don't, don't say it ain't so. My life for ire. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Trying to run those Zelts up there, but they are indeed Bronze League Zelts. They do have that one armor and one shield, even. Uh, will be able to do a lot, but not, not, not enough. Uh, nope, nope. I, I feel like with Bronze League Zealots, they actually, they, they actually are, they don't go through training of any kind. They're just given side blades. They're sent through the warp gate, and they're like, don't worry. Don't worry. The Terran player is so bad, you'll figure it out on the fly. And they don't. They never do, but uh, the Medivacs are going to be able to heal up these Marines and Marauder as Genova, my life for ire, has sent the remainder of those Zealots to their demise. He's still, 
still has two gateways with no warp gate. Zealot Legs is done. I... It's one of those things where I wish I could go back in time and just kind of like punch him out of his seat and be like, I'm taking this game over. I'm sorry. I, it's, for your, it's for your own good. I'm sorry for the broken nose, but it's, it, it's for your own good. Trust me. But it does look like the medevac's going to go ahead and move on out uh, to, I assume, what is, is this the natural? Is this the third base? I don't, fourth base? I don't really know what to call this anymore. Or is it just a nexus that happens to be placed kind of close to minerals? But here we go. He's going to go ahead and load, unload them here. Can Zelzul actually do the impossible? Is he actually going to win here considering how far behind he really was? He has made another siege tank as well. Will be able to take out the base. All the probes, they might as well just off themselves. I mean, they're dying in the most humiliating fashion ever. Down goes the nexus there. And all of a sudden, Genova realizing, maybe I should add on more gateways. Unfortunately, I... It's not one of those too little, too late type situations. It's one of those, like, you're dumb, and it should have been done five hours ago. It, it, this should have been done before the game was even played. That's how long ago it needed to be done. But, Genova, we still love you regardless, but unfortunately, your zealots do not. This stalker's got to try and take out that siege tank, and uh, might actually be able to get it, which, yes, he does get that. Needs to back him up, back him up, back him up. Nope, nope, not going to back him up, as all those stalkers are going to get taken out. Genova, I'm sorry for being so harsh with my words. I just got lost in the moment. You are still a very special Protoss player in all of our hearts and minds. Uh, what's not special in our hearts and minds, though, are these Sentry and Zealot, our Stalker over here. But he does have another gateway. So he's almost uh, doubled his production here with this one gateway. Oh my god, if he killed that tower to crush the Marines, it would be amazing. Don't think that's going to happen here, though. The Marines trying to get up the ramp, and they will manage to do it. One last Marine does fall. How many more units are on the field, though? There's three Zealots, one Stalker, one Sentry, three more Zealots on the way, and the Mushroom Core as well. There goes the Mushroom Core. Not enough energy to really do anything that useful here, though. The units streaming in one by one. I think he might actually be able to hold this up. Oh, my God. Is he going to do it? There are more units back at home, though, who are going to slowly work their way all the way across the map. Medivacs will escape. And, uh, you know, the, the thing that I really love about Bronze League Heroes is there's always that one player with over, like, 2,000 resources. It doesn't matter what point of the game it is. It'll be two minutes in the game or 20 minutes in the game with no units left. And there'll still be that one guy with 2,000 minerals. Today, that guy is Zalzul. Come on down. You're today's winner. Oh, my God. Did he? Wait, wait. Uh, is that? I, I hate Bronze Heroes because I never tell anymore if they're placed correctly. I feel like that is not placed correctly. Uh, but I feel like he's getting closer. I feel like it's uh, with every Nexus, he becomes one step closer to placing it correctly. And here comes the Zelda. The Zealots go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah, which unfortunately does not work out so well in StarCraft 2. Sea Shank is going to be on the low ground. We do have a Stalker on the way. He's never going to see the light, though. Honestly, Stalker, this is for the greater good. Here come the probes, though. He's going to pull everything off the line that he's got. The Sea Shank Blast should be pretty intense. Why are you attacking the cooling tower with the Sea Shank? Oh, my God. <laughs> he's like, ha, ah, Protoss will not have cool water. And uh, does manage to take out all... Oh, my God. Is he going to hold this off for now? Siege Tank, you are the derpiest thing. Oh, but he does kill off the tower. So mission accomplished. Operation Coolant has uh, been a success, depending on how you judge success. So he does kill off that cooling tower. The Marine right there, really not standing a chance. Uh, Genova could go back to mining. I mean, he might as well at this point because I think that uh, I think that Zelzul has shown us as well that he is a true Bronze League hero champion. And being a Bronze League hero champion doesn't mean you've won. It just means that you've made me laugh. And uh, I feel like Zelzul has officially done that by attacking the Coolant Tower at the most pivotal battle of his life. And uh, he, his, ar his supply, though, and army is much larger still than Genova. Genova deciding to mine at this base instead of the long distance mining one. Oh, this one still feels a little bit long distance, but maybe, maybe I'm mistaken. I've given up trying to tell. I mean, my brain is telling me it looks close enough. Close enough. And, oh, did he actually photon overcharge? No. No, of course he didn't. So the Mushroom Core does go down. The Nexus is going to be chilling out right now. And it looks like the Nexus is going to go down. I mean, really, I can't imagine this being saved in any way. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Secret Base has been identified. The Sentry and Zealot can't join in because they're Bronze League hero units. And the Zealot, where are you going, Zealot? Where? There you go. Turn it around. Turn it around. Should be able to save that Stalker. It's going to be close. No, it does go down. The Zealot will finish the job. That Zealot actually up to six kills. They say the Zealot is a mentor, but I feel like no, no Zealots from Bronze League heroes should ever mentor anything. But that uh, doesn't get the drop behind the mirror line. This may be the final blow. 
I don't I don't know if there's any going back. There, I mean, it's all it's all downhill for Genova. Well, really, it was all downhill for Genova once the game started. It does the Gellar Pro's going to get taken out as well. And I think Zalzul has done the impossible. There's going to be the GG. And uh, there's going to be the effing finally out of Zalzul. Oh, God, he finally ends it out right there. Oh, dear. That game had many of my favorite moments so far. I, th I think my favorite moment for that whole game, though, was going for the uh, going for the cooling tower there in the most pivotal battle. Whoa, that looks kind of cool with the, with the guys exploding and just raining down everywhere. I think that's the Mothership Core. That looks pretty dope. But uh, either way, look, it's a Christmas miracle, guys. It is literally a Christmas miracle. Hang on. Let, let's hide all this. There we go. It is a Christmas miracle. But uh, either way, an absolutely hilarious game. Uh, big thanks to my friends Invicta. If you would like to submit your replays, send them to huskyreplays at gmail.com. That is H-U-S-K-Y. R-E-P-L-A-Y-S at sign G-M-A-I-L dot C-O-M. I think I did that right. God, I'm so bad at spelling and doing math while doing a cast. Anyways, if you send them anywhere else, they will not be looked at. Uh, if you send it to Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, why would you be sending a replay on Instagram? I don't know. You guys are weird sometimes. But uh, only send them to huskyreplays at gmail.com. My friend Sinvik is the one who sorts through them. He is a great guy. He has literally sorted, I think, through tens of thousands of replays at this point to find us just those little golden gems. That, that wait, golden gem, that doesn't even make sense. Well, whatever, they're a golden gem, okay? Because it's Bronze League Heroes. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello, everyone. This is HES Guys here back with another episode of Bronze League Heroes. Uh, 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 that was the dubstep edition, but I don't want to hurt my voice too much. So, that is all you get. Anyways, this is going to be Bronze League Heroes, where we cast the very best of the very worst. Up at the top right side, it is going to be Seta. Or Sita, or Aid. Oh, it almost sounds like Aids backwards. We're not. We're not. Uh, uh, Addis backwards is what we're gonna be saying. Anyways, it's gonna be Seta. Well, Sita. We're gonna go with Sita. Sita up at the top right side and down at the bottom. Top right side, bottom right side. It's gonna be atomic number. We are fumbling over this because I was just uh, thinking in my head if I was to make a Bronze League Heroes dubstep, what would it sound like? Probably not very good. Because let's be honest, the majority of dubstep is terrible. Yes, there is some good stuff out there. But there's also, I feel like dubstep right now is that genre of music that everyone and their mom is like, well, I have a computer, I'm going to make some dubstep. And it's just like, no, that actually just sounds terrible. Uh, but anyways, it is going to be a PvP, which is always kind of fun to watch have happen in Bronze League Heroes. I'm actually kind of excited about this game. The map is going to be Whirlwind as well. And of course, guys, the whole point of Bronze League Heroes is to encourage you guys to get out there and play and to have a good laugh. Remember that StarCraft 2 is meant to be fun, and while it should be taken seriously, it should also not be taken seriously. Let's be honest, a lot of the fun in StarCraft is just messing around with friends or uh, just casually playing on a ladder. So, anyways, it is going to be uh, gateway first here out of both players, as it does look like they are going to be going for pretty standard stuff here. Corona boosting out those workers. All right, let's take bets. Who is going to be the first one to be supply blocked? That is the uh, that is the real question uh, of the hour. I'm gonna go for well, I'm gonna go for atomic number now that this guy actually did throw down another pylon. While the red player has not, we'll see if he actually does get supply blocked. Corona boost is gonna be coming on up. Keep in mind though, the whole point of Bronze League Heroes is not necessarily to be the best, but to just maybe get supply blocked. I don't, I don't know what the actual purpose of Bronze League Hero is, but uh, either way, that probe scouting around looking for those proxies. That's actually kind of smart. I like it. I like it, especially since we see so many proxies, cannon rushes, those kind of things. Oh, God. Oh, God. We have this probe over here. This probe is at the northern side of the base. I'm talking about proxies. I'm talking about how smart it is to scout. Oh. Oh, my God. He does see it, but does he know that it's actually there? This is why you always use the attack command, even when scouting inside your own base. But uh, either way, we do have that probe. In the oh, no. Oh, no. That probe is actually going to go undetected. He's detected, but in Bronze League Heroes, unless it attacks you, it is undetected because players tend not to look at their minimap. But uh, that probe, ninja probe right there, trying to blend in. He's. He it's like in TF2 when you're playing a spy and you and you change your color to the opposing color team, but you still have the spy skin. That's kind of what's going on right here. Where it's like he's not really hidden, but he kind of is. Uh, hiding up there in that corner right now, but uh, for now, oh, Santa, you animal. Typical Bronze League Hero stuff right here, man. We have a, a forge on the way already. We have the expansion going to be on the way for Atomic Number. 
which I don't know what an atomic number is, but uh, if it means that you get cannon rushed a lot, I think that's going to be the case. Now, one thing I love about Bronze League Heroes is the amount of cannons that are actually used. I mean, look at this. We already have one cannon inside the main base, so uh, Oracle Harassment, not going to be a threat. Phoenix Harassment, not really going to be a threat. Random Drops should be able to get cleaned up. Of course, building a cannon this early does, like, destroy your economy. The probe over here is like, yep, there's a cannon up there. Oh, my God. Second cannon set of you animal. All right. It's time for a pro tip of the day. If you're actually looking to improve, do not build cannons as early unless it is to secure your natural. That is the only way that it's going to be worth it. Or if you're doing a cannon rush, I personally would not recommend cannon rushing if you're trying to improve. If you're just trying to win and, and make people angry on ladder, then uh, definitely cannon rush all day but definitely not for improvement. We do have gateways on the way. Robo going to be on the way as well. Probe going to be scouting out that main uh, watchtower. I cannot believe that this probe is still alive up here. These gateways are going to be so close once they finish being able to spot it, but not quite enough. And uh, right now, I mean, Seta is not going to have to worry about his main base. He's got two cannons up here. He's also got the Stargate. He's also got the additional gateway on the way. We'll see what actually comes out of that Stargate. But I feel like, you know, I think the majority of what's going to happen now is going to be coming from Seta. Overall, units lost is zero. These guys are playing it quite nice. But this is going to pick up in just a moment. And the reason I say that is, is he's warping in gateways. He's got two gateways on the way now. He's got his Stargate with an Oracle on the way. And he has his probe inside the main base. This is kind of a an ideal situation as Protoss. These, these are the type of situations that you dream of as Protoss. Uh, Atomic Number does have his expansion up, though, so he's going to have more money than his opponent. And the probe over here still has not quite done. Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, it's getting out of the way. Oh, no, the Observer. The Observer's got a spot it there. He sees it. The... Uh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Now, remember, even though it shows... Oh, oh, we actually trapped the probe up here. Looks like that atomic number probe is going to get, oh, narrowly out of there. I thought it was going to die for sure, as this probe here is going to give chase right now. We'll see if it kills it off, but uh, Seta is going to be able to clean up the pylon near his base. I, I, oh, God, atomic number. Oh, no. Oh, no, atomic number. The pylon is right there, but, you know, really, mini maps are kind of overrated, so he's not going to be checking that. Observer for atomic number going to be scouting out right now. The big warpin actually of four stalkers right now. A bold move considering that he does have a, uh, well, now he has cannons on the way inside of his base. There's a big warpin. And this should be spotted at some point. You, at, at what point do you look at your minimap and go, that's a lot of blue in my base. And uh, I just blew myself. Am I right, guys? But, oh, oh, I don't know what that micro was. That, that micro was like, let's see how quickly I can lose this stalker. The Zelds are going to be attacking here and begin attacking those gateways. I think killing off the pylons might be a better option. Oracle going to be swooping on in the main base as well. Probes will evaporate. Keep in mind that the Oracle kills them in two ticks of damage, which basically takes about one to two seconds, and that is it. So the Oracle already up to uh, five kills. Not bad at all. The Stalkers up here not really not really being that useful whatsoever as there are going to be Zealots now attacking the main base. We have the Immortal going to be on the way here as well. Keep in mind that the Immortal will be useful, but not necessarily the most useful given the situation here as the Oracle now just harassing that Mineral Line. Oracle is going to go ahead and get on out of here. And the Zealots are going to be attacking. My life for ire. Although these Zealots are actually doing something useful. So that is, uh, that is always quite nice. Stalkers hanging out over here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we have the probe brought all the way, two probes brought all the way across the map. That probe is going to get it on, man. That probe is going uh, to places, well, not really. He ended up dying. There's the second probe over there. There's going to be the photon overcharge. I feel like backing those units up may be a good idea, but he's more focused on the battle down here. As the Immortal will go down, uh, the Stalkers over here trying to hold their own. I don't know if this is enough to deal with this. More units. Uh, these are the ones from the natural. Still bringing some probes in. I got to say, you know, tr oh, my God, a second probe. Oh, God. Oh, God, the rally point of the probes is on the stalkers. Oh, no. Oh, that's going to set you back. That's for sure. These four probes over here are like, well, uh, what do we do now? Oh, my God, probes are get shot by that as well. So don't ever try and kill a Nexus cannon with probes. That evidently does not work out very well. Oh, God, more probes. More probes are on the way. No, the Nexus cannon. So many kills. Five kills on that Nexus right now. But uh, what's more important is the battle taking place down here. Probe, what are you doing? No. The Observer literally is just sitting here watching this happen. He's just like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Please don't see me. I, I don't want to be seen around this army. But uh, so far, Atomic Number uh, not making the best moves here. You can see 3,200 resources lost, 1,100. But there's just that endearing quality about him. He's just he's still macroing on. He's still making probes. He's still making gateways. He even made another Observer because why the hell not? Oh, God, the battle's going to continue over here. It does look like a couple of these gateways will be underpowered once this pylon does go down. If it does go down, actually, 
looks like that did get pushed back there. I think actually Atomic Number has enough to engage directly, but I think he's a little bit too scared of those cannons there. More scared than he really, really should be. Uh, Photon Overcharge will be moments away. The Gateway actually gets taken out here. The Pylon does remain. Morgan's going to be warp again right now, and I feel like Atomic Number is a little bit scared to actually engage right now. Hopefully his rally point is reset. Okay, there it is. He does have that rally point down there. Oh, he's got to break it. He's got to try and break it. He's got to march up to the top right side. He needs to go off that Pylon if possible. He's going to be going for the units here. And more units you know, going to be warping in, though. These are going to be Zealots. The Immortal here just blasting away four kills on the... And look at it, they actually queued up attacks. That's kind of cute. And we'll be able to kill that one off. He should be able to clear out the rest of this. And you have to go ahead and march up there. Don't want... Nope, you can kill it. You can kill it. There he goes. He's going to go ahead and go for that right now. Does take out the cancer. This attack will finally be cleaned up. Oh, God. More units warping in. Is this attack going to be cleaned up, though? That's the real question. So many Zealots. Oh, my God. These Zealots are going to be saving my life for Pylo. As they're going to be saving this Pylon, apparently. The Immortal over here is going to get taken out. That pylon does remain. That means more units can still warp in. Again, this Observer is just like, I don't want to be seen in this world. Can I just go to another battlefield? I think the Photon Overcharge, though, will be enough to kind of scare us away. The Mushroom Core as well. Got to be hovering about it. So far, this is like one of the most action-packed Bronze League heroes. That is for sure. More units got to be warping in. Overall resources lost. I believe that Atomic Number has evened this out in quite a big way. 4,900 to 3,300. There's going to be the Photon Overcharge. Stalker can't get taken out, but more units going to be warping in to try and hold off this attack. Non-stop auction. So, uh, non-stop auction. Oh, my God. Are we selling things? And do we have a bid for 250 over here on the Nexus? Got to be going for 350, 350. Do we have 350 here? 350. 350 and two gas. Two, 350 and two gas. Two, and we have a bid over here by the user player. And sold to the Kerrigan in the back of the room with the spiky hair. All right. So, anyways, uh, we do have the Stalkers now. Oh, that Immortal, though, spawning on the wrong side of town. Or was he on the right side of town? We have the Rambo Immortal over here. Got to be able to take out all those Stalkers. I think he is eventually going to lose. Oh, no. He's, he's going to keep it alive as uh, the Rambo Immortal, man. The, uh, I'll be back. Uh, wait, the Rambo and Arnold Schwarzenegger are not are not played. A anyways, we do have the stalkers over here. Got to be pushing this back, and uh, another Robo on the way, which I guess say double Robo, uh, a good strategy in PvP given the circumstances. I don't know if he can actually afford it. Uh, well, yes, he has a lot of money. Of course, he can afford it. This is a Bronze League Heroes. Really, really, I should be encouraging them just to make as many buildings as possible. But regardless, the attack is going to continue right now. And I am okay with that. This game is actually pretty hilarious at this point. Trying to micro those stalkers, not macroing uh, at all. He's completely supply blocked. He's not spending any money. He has no production. So really all he can do is focus on his micro. I think that's the only thing he's probably doing right now. That's all. It will eventually go down. But the Immortal goes down as well. Uh, just like when Arnold jumps into the lava pit at the end of Terminator 2. Spoiler alert. That movie came out like 20 years ago. But uh, anyway, more than that, right? When did, when did Terminator 3 come out? I actually don't know off the top of my head. Either way, I think the main base has finally been secured by Atomic Number. Ooh, warping of those Zelts under an Oracle. That's never good. The, I love how the Oracle's like, oh, God, we got to get out of here. As the Zelts are warping in, even though we could have easily killed them off. But the Stalkers right now are going to be marching up here to try and kill off. Can he save the Mushroom Core? Looks like, yes, he will be able to. These Stalkers, though, they got, they got a lot of work to do right now. Now, keep in mind, though, that Atomic Number does have his natural, while uh, Seta does not have it. Oh, God, he's going to go for the Nexus. He's got to go for the Nexus. Where is the Stalkers going to be helping out the Nexus? That's not going to happen. Goodbye, Nexus. It's been nice knowing you. Uh, at the same time, though, 21 workers on minerals, but the patches are going to be disappearing here in just a moment. And overall income, you can see, is actually about the same, just because, again, those patches will be gone momentarily. Worker count is favoring Seta, but he has not expanded until just now. Guess what? That could be denied. Oh, he cancels it, even though the Zealots are running by. Oh, Bronze League Heroes, mind games. The Zealots right here, I don't think are going to be able to do anything, but they did force a cancel on the Nexus accidentally. I feel like the Zelts are, maybe these Zelts are actually blind and they're just like, all right, well, we, we, we shouldn't go over here because we're getting shot at. Uh, oh God. All right, those were some true, true Bronze League Hero Zelts. And uh, don't think the main base is going to get cleaned out here though. My God, I'm cheering for Atomic Number so hard right now. I am cheering for him so hard. Oh, he's got a pylon set up. We'll see if anything comes of that. We do have the gateways now up and running. And the Stalker's still just kind of chilling out right now. Uh, is he actually going to be able to kill off this main base? Uh, are the units that are at least stuck up here? That's going to be the real question of this of this game so far. Five gateways off of one base, but he has so much money he can afford it. Uh, Cybernetic Score. We got the proxy Cybernetic Score up here. I like how Atomic Number's like, you know what I need to do? You know what tech I need to hide so that he doesn't know about it? I need to hide the Cybernetic Score. Warp Gate is actually going to be done. The uh, the Nexus Cannon may be saving him right now. I mean, the, the Protoss units have so much HP that it takes forever to kill off anything with it. But the Zealots here holding the line for now. They'll eventually get taken. Wait, why aren't those... What? Why, why are you going for the Pylon? You can kill the units right here. He really wanted to kill off that one Pylon. He, he did not like that Pylon. I can't blame him. 
But unfortunately, I think it ended up costing him that battle right now. And uh, I think the Photon Overcharge is eventually going to clean this up. He's still going for pylons right now. More units are warping in. We are going to be having a Twilight Council on the way. So I think it's going to be hidden DTs, and uh, that proxy pylon will allow them to warp in quite easily. There is, though, 39 supply to 55. Atomic number once again with that redeeming uh, with, with that redeeming quality, endearing quality, where he just does not give up. And honestly, in Bronze League Heroes, I feel like if there is any ladder or, or any game that you should not give up, it's going to be in Bronze League Heroes games because we have seen players with the most silly comebacks ever. Because, the oh, God, the battle is still taking place down here. I think, oh, we actually do have a plus one attack for both players. I didn't even realize that was happening. I've kind of given up on Protoss players getting upgrades in Bronze League Heroes. But no, both players actually going for plus one. Now attempting to micro uh, to return the favor. These zealots are like, well, this is this is kind of easy. You're going to be able to kill off that stalker, I feel like, quite easily. Oh, we do have an Oracle over here, though. We're going to be harassing 28 kills. 28 kills on that Oracle. Are you... Are you kidding me? D Dark Shrine is going to be on the way, so it is going to be proxy DT. Proxy hidden DTs. Which, uh, normally you don't say a, a unit out of the gateway is proxy just because it tends to warp in unless it's in the early, early game. Then uh, then it'll spawn at the uh, the gateway itself. But either way, uh, yeah, we'll be able to attack those bricks up there. So I guess that's uh, something you can do. We're going to try and attack these pylons as well. I think going from pylons, not a bad choice. However, there is going to be the Dark Shrine on the way. Stalker Zealot is now done. 35 supply to 53. That expansion, is it up and running? Yes, it is. Seda, uh, actually able to get that base up and running, has since transferred all of his workers down there. But this is Bronze League Hero, so you know he's not going to be expanding again until that base is mined out. Oracle, though, chilling out on the high ground. 28 kills. Oh, guys, going to lose it. No! The Executor. Executor Oracle gets taken out. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. As Atomic Number going to go ahead and retreat back to his base. Now, really, if you put the Stalkers right here... Oh, my God. He's actually going to do it. He is actually going to do it. If you put the Stalkers right there, you can begin attacking the high ground. Which, uh, stay on the high ground, buddy. You can kill off the gas. You can kill off the pylon. Not that he knows about the Dark Templar on the way. But in typical Bronze League hero fashion, saving up a lot of money. So we can warp in many, many units here later in the game. Oh, the DT's right there. All of a sudden, this army realizes, rut row, not a whole lot going on here. Does he actually have... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, he doesn't have a robo. All of a sudden, realizing I've got to get this robo out. Three DTs are on the way, though, and three DTs can just slice through not only workers, but cannons as well. And those DTs, Chrono Boost uh, with more of them on the way. These stalkers retreating back home to try and clean this out. I don't think there's actually enough cannons here, though. Three DTs can kill a cannon without losing a single DT. And he is indeed going to do just that. Going to go straight for it and takes it out. The other cannon is on the way. This one's going to get taken out as well. We do have the Robo about halfway done. I don't know if the DTs are going to spot this in time. We shall see. The expansion, though, is going to be extremely vulnerable. We do have another cannon going to be on the way. We do have the Motion Core on the way. But unfortunately, guess what? These DTs are already here. They are ready to go. Goodbye, cannon. Nowhere uh, near going to be able to finish. I think Atomic Number all of a sudden with the miraculous comeback. Uh, I got to say that build by Sita was pretty awesome and uh, was actually highly entertaining. One of the most entertaining builds I've seen. We do have the Observer on the way. This Observer is now past the point of no delay, which means that it cannot be killed out. I just came up with that term. I don't think that's an actual term. But uh, one Observer is on the way. More units are warping in, so these DT should be cleaned up. Avoid Ray as well. Avoid Ray is actually going to be extremely handy right now. Uh, unless it's attacking your own units, that's not very handy. Uh, handy for Atomic Number, I suppose. Looks like you will kill off all these DTs. So three are killed off there, but the Nexus has already gone down. Oh, no. Now he has to long distance mine. Both players have sacrificed. Uh, their main mining nexus at one point in this game. You can see the one down here, Sacrifice. The one at the natural, which is his only mining location, Sacrifice. Now these probes do have to long distance mine. Uh, mining gas, not ideal. You want to get all your probes going so you get that nexus up as soon as uh, humanly possible. The DTs, though, can now easily morph into Archons. We have an even game. The supply is even. The pylon finally gets taken out. If pylons had kill counters, that would be in, like, at least the 50s because he warped in so many units off that pylon. It has finally since been cleaned up. Uh, four Archons on the way. I don't know if Seda can actually deal with this right now. I mean, even though it's even supply, let's take a look at the units tab. Uh, a little bit of that is in the probe count. He does manage to kill off an Observer, which is nice. But four Archons, you have to micro these Stalkers like crazy to be able to kill off that many Archons. The army is going to be moving out. Nope, decides to go ahead and retreat on through. Four Archons, though, on the field. That is ridiculous. Two Dark Templar. Where are these DTs? That is the real question. Ah, keep them in the army. Keep in mind that DTs do actually have a lot of DPS. So keeping them in your army is not that big of a deal. We do have a forward pylon going to be... Wait, no, it's not forward. 
Where is that? Where is that pylon? It is forward. Okay, so he actually is supply blocked right now. This is going to be buying Seda a little bit of time, but the problem is that he can't do anything until he has 400 minerals. And taking a look at his income, it's actually at zero because long as his mining takes so long. I mean, obviously they get up there, but uh, not looking great for him. He's going to have to throw down a nexus. But the problem is, is that now he can't uh, do anything else. So Void Ray is going to be able to find this. Should actually be able to kill off at least the Dark Shrine. And don't go for the pylon because that's not powering anything important. But either way, at this point, the pro tip of the day would be go for the Dark Shrine. You want to delay Archons and DTs. The pylon, keep in mind that you can already use these three buildings because this is Stalkers. Um, he doesn't have any upgrades on the way. And this is DTs. You can use all those uh, with or without power just, to, just for the tech. And Muzhikor does... No, oh, it goes down. Looks like the probe's going to go down as well here. He does still have enough for an expansion. I thought that was a real probe right there. Nope, it was a dead one. And uh, he does have enough for an expansion. But my god, I think Atomic Number has actually done it. These probes not even doing anything. They're just on hold position, or at least on just the sit command. The sit and take it command. And the Archons, look at that go to surround. That sweet micro got to be finishing this off. So Atomic Number is going to be your victor in one of the most hilarious comebacks. And one of the most non-stop action-packed Bronze League heroes I think I've ever seen. Uh, there was obviously some major mistakes. If you guys go back and watch, there was some major mistakes happening. So I'd go back and watch those if you would like a refresher. That was absolutely hilarious. But uh, Bronze League heroes, guys, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, then I'm sorry. Uh, but there's no hope for you at this point, let's be honest. So anyways, hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HGS Gas here back with some more Bronze League Hero! Oh, 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 is I going to remix that into a song or something sometime? Anyway, spawning down on the bottom right side, it is going to be Dragon Zerg. I think his shift key was a little bit broken there, but it is going to be from Clan SPQ, Special Forces, spelled with a PH, uh, Quadrant. That's, uh, that, here, here, I'll spell it out for you guys. Special Forces Quadrant, that's the name of his clan, I just made it up. And his opponent up at the top right side is in Are You Dude? It is going to be Parametric. I don't know what that word means, but he is in the clan Are You Dude, which stands for Really Ugly Dogs uh, Underutilizing Deodorant uh, Efficiently. All right. That's quite, quite the clan there. It is going to be a ZBZ. And uh, for those of you who follow my channel closely, you may know that uh, there hasn't been many videos lately, which uh, it's for good reason. Actually, it's for three different reasons. One of them, one of them's good, one of them's bad, and one of them's kind of eh. The, uh, the good reason is that we do have a lot of projects coming out. The Pacific Rim video just came out, and also our Super Seeker project is going to be announced in two days! Oh, yes. So that's uh, that's pretty cool stuff there. Um, the bad one is that YouTube has actually been really finicky lately. Oh, my God. What do we got going on? We got Overlords moving out. Uh, spawning pool going to be on the way for both players here, actually. And that was a gas as well. Is it going to be for both? Nope. Just going to be for Dragon Zerg. And we actually do have a drone scout out here for Parametric. But uh, anyways, YouTube has been acting really, really weird lately. Uh, if you guys saw my Civ video, it actually didn't process for like three days or something just crazy like that. So uh, having some issues with those video uploads. And uh, the third reason is that I'm actually preparing to make a lot of stuff. So I, I kind of had to line all those up as well. So either way, a ZBZ here for Bronze League Heroes where we cast the very best of the very worst. The games may be bad. The players may be bad. But oh my god, it is so, so good. Also, I want to give a big thanks to everyone who has been commenting, liking, uh, or just watching in general on the videos. They all get, I think, over 100,000 views or something crazy, which is uh, just watching players play the game the way it was meant to be played, which is to have fun with it, no matter how good or bad you may be on the spectrum of StarCraft. And uh, we do have this drone over here. Oh my god, he's like, no, I, I don't get the patrol command, but what I do get is 800 different movement commands. So that drone uh, has his work cut out for him. And for now, we actually have a spine crawler on the way. Where is this taking place? Oh, the spine crawler is inside the main base. All right, this is something that I personally like to do, but uh, I'm also really bad at Zerg and also even worse at ZBZ. I like having those spine crawlers because Zergling runbys are such a pain in the boot. Hey! We'll just have to see if that actually happens or not in this game. Oh, queens are going to be spawning here for both players. Uh, actually, we're going to have one for Dragon Zerg pretty soon. There goes the Baneling Nest down right now. We're going to see if uh, if that makes a big old difference here or not. And I don't know. I mean, Banelings are pretty good, especially in Bronze League Heroes. Uh, Because I mean, basically, I, 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 the reason I'm doing that is because I'm trying to think, is it better to have Banelings because you can't micro, or is it better not to get Banelings because you can't micro? I want to say in this situation, it's better to have Banelings and hope that your opponent has Lings and cannot micro. 
Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see, though, as both players do have Zergling speed on the way. We got uh, more Zerglings, Baneling Nest for both players. Got to be on the way right now. So pretty standard ZVZ right now. I mean, getting the uh, early spawning pool, early queens, early Banelings, yada, yada. That is completely standard schmandard right there. It does look like the first Baneling Nest is going to be done for Dragon Zerg right now. And apparently we have a drone chilling out down here who is hotkeyed. He keeps going back and forth that drone, so I'm not quite sure what that drone's goal is. I don't know if he's going to be doing anything or not. Oh, we got the three Banelings on the way. Hey, apparently it's only three Banelings. No more Banelings than that is required. And oh my god, Parametric is already running past this. Are we about to have the world's fastest base race? Is this uh, is this actually about to happen here? I feel like it is indeed going to be base race because the Lings are going the complete opposite way. No one has any watchtowers. The Overlord over here, bless its little soul. Uh, I think spotted a little bit of that, but maybe not the entire thing. Apparently there's a drone across the map as well. Here comes this drone. Oh my god, it's actually going to be a spine crawler inside of Dragon Zerg's base, but at the same time, these links are going to be getting into a pretty good position to start dealing some damage. The spine crawler is uh, going to town, though. Those Banelings, though, taking out the drones right away. Looks like the remainder of the drones are going to get taken out here as well. And uh, I don't know if you can hear those fire alarms, but they are doing a fire alarm check, which I guess is perfect time to do it because this is when uh, the attack is happening. So sound the alarm as it does look like the Zerglings are going to be able to take out all the drones as well. Oh my god, I think we're just going to be having a base race. Like, literally the world's fastest base race. This is like a Lance Armstrong base race where all these Zerglings are doping. Oh, too soon. It does look like the Spine Crawler is going to get taken out as well. And uh, not a whole lot of defense here. Now, keep in mind, this is Parametric Spine Crawler. This is a red Spine Crawler. Kind of hard to tell in ZBZ what color it actually is. But that is a red Spine Crawler as the Blue Lings trying to hold their own. Not going to happen quite yet, though. Uh, the main base up here, though, is completely toast. You can see that the, uh, all these buildings are definitely going to get taken out right now. You just have to make sure not to engage those broodlings if possible because they will be getting uh, free additional kills on those links. And considering that we, we now have zero income for both players, the amount of harvesters is currently one in the, in the total overall uh, kind of pace of the game is essentially just one worker. Oh god, the smoke alarms are getting closer. I hope that uh, they don't actually turn the ones on in my house. But it does look right now that the Zerglings here are uh, actually able to hold their own. Going to be going for the spawning pool as well. We do have a couple of Zerglings on the way being constructed. Uh, doesn't look like the eggs will get taken out. The rally point should be able to save the majority of those links. They're going to be moving out extremely quickly. And it looks like the drone up here going to be hacking away all by himself using those little claws. He's trying to mine gas, but nothing's coming out there. And what, what do we have going on here on the structure tab? We have an evolution chamber, or not an evo chamber, excuse me, an extractor, a spine car versus an extractor, baneling nest. The spawning pool does go down. Baneling nest is about to go down as well. The broodlings here might be getting a couple of kills there. you got to be careful with every single unit that you have. And uh, all we have left is an extractor and a baneling nest. You can see a parametric doesn't actually have any structures technically because the spine crawler is unburrowed. It should show up as a structure here in just a moment. I think it's under a unit. No, it actually just disappears from all the tabs. There we go. He does have a spine crawl now. So it's going to be a spine crawler versus an extractor. Oh my god. Oh my god. Can Dragon Zerg actually save this as a spine crawler? Uh, looks like the Lings may go down. The spine crawler trying to focus it down, but it's actually taking the Zerglings right now. It needs to go around and attack the extractor. And oh my god. The extractor is 4 HP. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my god. oh my god. Oh my god. Wait. Wait. wait is it? Yeah, it's actually over. They were defeated. Hey God, we got we gotta watch that. Uh, oh my God, oh my God, this is this is one of these shorter Bronze League heroes, but also one of the most hilarious. All right, so the Lings are right there. The last Ling right here dies. This extractor has four HP. The spine crawler at 59, but with a million Lings on it, and the Lings are attacking. And oh, what is this? Where are the Lings going? Oh my God, this is the moment right here. Where the Ling over here is like, hey guys, come check it out over here. It'll be cool. It's like that scene in, uh, in The Lion King, man, when he goes and plays with the hyenas. Not a good choice because Scar, the spine crawler, is going to kill you uh, by a stampeding herd of antelope or whatever they were. Uh, but it does look right here. They go over there, and then the spine crawler is like, oh, okay. Uh, maybe I should attack this. You can see him clicking over here. And then I think he eventually... Ah! <laughs> and this is the moment where you realize... I've made a huge mistake. So, oh my god, that is so hilarious. One of the closest and yet quickest games I think I've ever seen. And you know what the hilarious part is? Is that Dragon Zerg had a drone that was for some reason coming back, and he had enough money to build an extractor. So if he would have just built it anywhere else, he would have actually ended up winning. So on the units tab for Red Player, we have four overlords, and that's it. On the Structures tab, we have a Spine Crawler, and that is it. And uh, that is that is all. Okay. All right. Very interesting stuff there. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoy it. I can't believe this game. This is hilarious. Hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time.
Hello, everyone. This is HSS Gear back to some more StarCraft 2 Harvest Swarm. Uh, just kidding. It's Bronze League Heroes. That is right. Well, I'm going to be casting a game between I Am the Swarm down in the bottom left side. His name is slightly misleading as he does not appear to actually be the swarm, but maybe they are all infested Terrans. And his opponent up at the top right side is going to be Wavis or Siva, if you want to read it backwards there. So it's going to be Wavis versus I Am the Swarm. Neither of them are in a very prestigious clan, like in the last game that uh, I cast, as they were in a very good clan. And you may be saying, you know what, Husky? Uh, your last game was Bronze League Heroes. Why are you casting another one already? Well, I will tell you, they have been testing the fire alarms at our apartment complex for two days straight, and then someone unplugged their fire alarm, so they had to test them all again. I'm going crazy, and the only cure for craziness, guys, is uh, you should probably actually get some real psychiatric help and maybe some medication. But in this case, it is going to be Bronze League Heroes, but I am not a doctor, and so... Oh, my God. Are we going to be seeing a cannon rush? I feel like... At this point, the standard Protoss build for all matchups is going to be a cannon rush. I can't imagine these guys be dropping down a gateway. No, of course it's a cannon rush. Good old Bronze League heroes, man. I love that this probe isn't even really trying to hide that much. Uh, Wave is asking, is there lag? I and the Swarm says, yep. And does he have a barracks? Nope, just going to be going for that gas right away. Barracks going to be going down as well. So here comes the pylon here, not really hiding it as far back as he could. However, I don't think Wavis is going to be uh, too uh, worried about getting scouted here. What race are you? Me, are you? S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S, me. Uh, what race were you? I'm so confused. What is going on? I guess, uh, I guess he played random, and Wavis does not want to scout him. So he's asking him from here, what race are you? Uh, this is this is going to be a great game. We also have a second probe going to be moving out right now. And uh, Wave is asking if he has the coveted dial-up modems. Uh, not, I, I, I believe not to be confused with dial-up modems. So the dial-up modems. And we do have an SCV going to be scooting on over here as well. I can only assume that Wavis is going to fully commit to these cannon rushes. He does have two cannons now on the way. Does I Am the Swarm realize it? Well, he sure as hell does now. First Marine going to be on the way. We also got the pylon now on the way. SCVs pulled off the line. That's not going to work, though. As that cannon, they're going to be pushing it back. Keep in mind that uh, SCVs do take three shots from cannons. That's something that's very, very important to remember, uh, as opposed to for other races workers. And two cannons are done. Are going to be having cannon number three. And honestly, I, you know, I really should come to expect this from Bronze League Heroes. You know, you, you always see those those messages on forums of people who are like, I, I play so much Bronze League, and everyone just cannon rush me. I feel like uh, this is kind of fulfilling that that those those posts online it is validating them it does like the two marines right here gonna be taking out the first cannon i believe that that cannon will die before i guess it got one shot off two marines are gonna have to hunt it over here so so far able to kill off the one cannon so far this probe gonna be going uh back and forth try to place down pylons if at first you don't succeed try try again which uh, normally does not work in starcraft 2 but we're gonna see if it works out here and that cannon's gonna get taken out it gets one shot off now the Marines are going to be hunt hunting it over here. This is like those, uh, those you guys ever play like basketball or anything and in middle school, high school. I, I feel like these are the drills, man. Running back and forth your little station, doing a bunch of work. Here we go. Moving up to the north. You got to take out this cannon as well. Uh, Wave is not really getting... Not really getting a whole lot done here with these cannons. So far, he's lost 487 resources to a currently flawless victory. I am the Swarm. He is going to be supply blocked here, but he does have the Marauder on the way. The Marines going to be working on the pylon here. They really want to be going for the cannons. Oh, more shots there to the face. And is he focusing down the right one? I believe he is. Hunt, hunting those Marines every which way. I think the cannon on the south side. No, the Marauder is going to be here in time. Should be able to force a cancel on this one. Uh, no, that's just a pylon, so that's going to finish up. There's going to be a cannon up to the north, though. Is that one going to be finished? I believe these Marines have kind of done their job. I mean, two kills, one kill, and one kill. The Marauder has a kill as well. So still, no resources lost whatsoever in holding off this cannon rush. Can't say that that's too bad. Uh, Wave is, though, going to be pulling out the big gun saying, nice lag hack. I think it's called not having a, a very good internet connection, but we'll call it a lag hack. I mean, that, that sounds pretty legitimate, as uh, it does look like now he's kind of back in this corner of the cannon here. He is going to get first blood. The first Marine has fallen over, although these have actually, these Marines are surviving much longer than you may ever anticipate uh, in a Bronze League game. It looks like they're going to go ahead and take out the remaining cannon right there. Does end up losing a couple Marines here. I also love the No Orbital Command, a classic Bronze League hero build order. And it does like this cannon down here. Oh, that's going to finish. Well, I think even the probe there got a kill. Yes, he is. He's still a, uh, a, a disciple. 
which is fine. We are okay with that. Oh god, two more barracks. Out. Three more barracks out of the way. So we're going to be going for five racks off of one base. That's when you know it's an awesome macro game. And it looks like that one is going to go down. SDB trying to steal all the glory by killing that off with the Marauder. Should be A-OK. -okay. We actually do have combat shields on the way, which is not bad whatsoever. Uh, kind of surprised actually that we could be seeing Simpack as well. These cans being canceled left and right. Overall resources lost. I think you could say that... <laughs> Do F you is what he's saying there. Uh, so far, I think he's at about a 40% spell correction rate. Oh, God, that's going to hurt his uh, his ratio there. I see Nat Micro in this. Uh, apparently, he's pretty upset about the, like, I also love how he's blaming his Cannon Rush Micro, uh, one of the builds that takes the least amount of Micro in the game on the fact that it is lagging. Now, I will say I have been there. Uh, lagging out is is not fun if you're in a laggy game when your opponent's lagging. I, I can sympathize here. However, uh, nice job, Hacker. Okay. All right, we did three three tech labs. Oh my god! So we are going to be having five racks with five tech labs and two engineering bays. Uh, I in the swarm. This you're you're buying these on credit. You do know you have to pay these off later. And uh, he says er, lag hack. I, I feel like that's not necessarily the case. We'll find out though if Wavis can uh, can kind of pull this one back around. As apparently nonstop cannon rush when you aren't completing any cannons. Doesn't really do a whole lot. But for now, the Marauders can go ahead and move out. Looks like they should be able to take out the probe. Do they have Marauders slow? Yes, they do. Marauders slow and combat shields now done. Stim pack kind of be on the way. Of course, though, uh, I am the Swarm cannot actually make any, uh, like, well, he can't make any more units right now because he doesn't have enough money. He has to expand right now. I am the Swarm saying, don't cannon rush me, bro. Uh, well, that's going to be just fine here. Wavis, I'm kind of curious to see exactly how this game pans out. I mean, where do you go from here after your completely failed cannon rush fails again and again and again and then again and then yelling about lag hacks? That didn't work. So now he's actually got to focus. He's got to play a macro game. He's got to figure it out. And, uh, well, so far he's just going for lots of cannons. I feel like I really need to do a seminar. And, and this would be really a public service. This would be a free admission seminar. Uh, I would invite all the Protoss and random players out there, and I would tell them, do not build cannons uh, nonstop all the time. They're not that great. Oh, we canceled it. All right, well, that would be part of the seminar, too, is if you find yourself building lots of cannons that you don't need, just go ahead and cancel them. Get some of that money back. It's not too late. Uh, the gateways are done. Cybernetics Core going to be on the way. You know it's a good Bronze League Heroes game when the Cybernetics Core goes down at the 11-minute mark, uh, or pretty close to it. That That's when you know it is a true showcase of Bronze League Heroes. Now, I do want to say that I Am the Swarm is going to be going for lots of Marine and Marauder, which is a very smart move. If you are a Bronze League Terran, I highly recommend, with my pro tip of the day, to go for Marine and Marauder. It's a very good uh, unit composition. It's very good in the early and mid game. And late game, you will struggle a little bit, but at least you're not struggling in the early and mid game as much. We do have plus one, plus one on the way. I gotta say, I actually like I Am the Swarm. I feel like, you know, he got too many barracks, that is for sure, off of one base. And he got the engineering base before he could really afford to produce units and upgrades. However, his thought process is very good. Make lots of workers. Uh, well, he stopped making workers for now. But he did get the Orbital Command. His thought process is good. Get lots of workers, get lots of production, get lots of upgrades, and go from there, which is a good thought process to have because a lot of times you see Bronze League players do neither of those things, which is not good. However, he does need to find a balance between more workers and uh, less early production right now, though he is able to at least spend his money here. So both these players able to start cutting into those funds. And, well, it looks like Wavis is investing in plus one attack for his three centuries. Uh, I don't know that they're really going to benefit from the plus one attack all that much. We'll wait. We'll wait and see as it does remain to be seen. And Warpgate should be on the way. It actually is on the way. So both these players stabilizing a little bit. I'm feeling kind of good. Uh, I feel like no big disasters are about to take place. But remember, guys, the whole point of Bronze League Heroes is cast the very best of the very worst to have fun, go out there, play some StarCraft, realize that, yes, ladder can be stressful, but it can also be a lot of fun. And don't take it too seriously. But either way, we do have the Stalker going to be out now. Uh, three sentries and two Stalkers. we got a full house right now. If he was playing Yahtzee, man, that is some fatty points. We do have a third Stalker right now. Three of a kind. Oh, my God. So many Yahtzee. Oh, four of a kind. Whew. He's, uh, he'd be doing pretty good at Yahtzee, but past that, not so great. Here come the Rain and Marauder right now. And I actually think that the cannons in this situation, you can see that they are told to attack right here. This might actually be a disaster 
for I am the Swarm. He was able to win those early battles, but uh, oh god. Okay, this might be a disaster for Wavis. What are you doing, Wavis? No, 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 engage. You want to back up? Back it up, Wavis. Back it up, Wavis. No. Okay, he's going to lose a couple of those units. Not all of them, though. He still does have the three cannons on the high ground to help him out. I think that that is enough to hold these off for now, although I am the Swarm. Playing it out quite smart. Not actually going to be going up there just yet. More reinforcements are on the way. This may be enough to actually break this, but the warp gates are done. Zealots could be warping in to help hold the line. Stalkers as well. Uh, it looks like there's going to be the big scan right there. And at that point, I am the Swarm. He might decide to actually go for it here, which with the cannons up here, I don't know. We'll find out. Yet the cannons are in range there. We'll be able to uh, snipe a couple of those units if they get a little bit too close. Wavis does have his expansion now up and running. And there's going to be the cannons. Force fields, Guardian Shield, any of the above. Nope, Sentry's just going to get taken out. Stocks here trying to hold the line. The Mushroom Core does not have enough for Photon Overcharge. Not that it would matter because, well, there's nothing to Photon Overcharge. The Nexus is going to be on the way, but it's not quite done yet. More Pylons going to repower this gateway down here. However, Wavis is in the situation that all Protoss players loathe, which is being stuck on pure gateway units. Let's be all honest. We have all been in the situation where when you are stuck on pure gateway units, then that is basically it. There is a supply block on the way for Wavis. However, that this game comes down to if your cannon rush don't work you just got to cut your losses and let it go i mean that's it, you just got to do it you can't keep investing that money uh into your cannons you can see 2900 resources lost to a mere 900 for eye on the swarm although i will say that uh with the metabacks on the way if Wavis can intercept the Metabacks while they're attempting to do drops, then maybe he can turn this game around. But honestly, right now, I just don't see this game going either way. Uh, it looks like, actually, the probe going to be going out right now. But yeah, I don't see this game going. Oh, oh, dude, seriously. Here it goes. Here it goes. What's he going to say? What's he going to say? Oh, I was kind of hoping for something awesome. Oh, I have a storm saying what? Question mark. And uh, Wave is going to be dropping down a pylon or something over here, I can only assume, maybe to try and warp in units down there. And the Medivac is going to be healing up this army, which this is where this army becomes a uh, good thing I'm recording right now. Oh, snap. With the I'm recording smack talk, as and now both players guilty of a little bit of smack talk. And it looks like that pylon is going to be ready to go. The probe actually just chilling out. Oh, my God, this wallet is, it's, uh, you're lagging so bad. This wallet has a few holes that uh, bro <laughs> there we go apparently he's going to be a fan right now and uh evidently calling out the show which hey that's a uh, that's a pretty good thing for me i i i can laugh at that as uh, we do have the units on top with the plus one attack and wave is saying that is not cool man that is just not cool whatsoever and uh oh uh oh could be a drop going to be moving on right now is he going to be able to intercept this i don't think so doesn't even use the boost because screw wait no he did use the boost i'm, I'm tripping i am tripping but we actually do have a twilight council plus one armor is going to be on the way although plus two uh, is almost done now for i am the swarm as well he's already at one one here meta back up here got to be dropping in the mineral line there is one cannon here which should buy him a little bit of time that is not enough to kill off that uh, that drop, though. That's going to be coming on in right now. now does, does this entire army back on up? Yes, it does. That is going to be opening up the front gate right now. And this is not going to look good right now for Wavis. I do not think he has enough to hold this off. Really not a whole lot going on here. The main base drop is relatively easily cleaned up here. It's just that this natural, I mean, there is going to be no natural yet, as there is going to be a big stem. He's going to be marching up the ramp. And, oh, no photon overcharge is going to be thrown down. And it looks like the... Uh, the force field's coming a little bit too late here, unfortunately, and I think that that is, I think that's going to be it. As uh, those poor stalkers trying to find the high ground, but they're already spotted by the medevacs, which means that they do not even get that high ground advantage of not being able to be attacked. And looks like the yeah, pure stalker not going to be good. Blink is on the way, uh, but I feel like in the blink of an eye, he's going to be out of this game. So waiting for the actual blink upgrade, not going to be that useful. Uh, a big counterattack could have been useful with the big warp ends, but he was trying to do it. And GG, you're getting reported for lag hack. Oh, wow. Got to be reporting him there, evidently. So, uh, all right. Well, you know, it's been nice knowing you. I am the swarm. I feel like, I feel like, you know, now that you have been reported for lag hacking, that you are no longer going to be with us. So we mourn your loss. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, it, it should be illegal in all five uh, I will, five what? All five regions that this game is played in. We're, we're, we're just making arbitrary numbers here. But it should be illegal for you to have bad internet, I feel like. that is. Uh, there should be a bad internet ladder only. Uh, we do have two command servers going to be on the way for I am the Swarm, but 
you know, at this point, he ended up winning the game. And even though that game wasn't the greatest, I, I find the chat hilarious enough that I am still going to upload it. The chat alone makes me giggle because I've been there. I've wanted to rage quite a bit. But you guys, you got to keep your composure. You got to keep your cool. And telling, your, telling them you're going to report them is just hilarious to me. So anyways, hope you guys enjoy it. And I'll see you guys next time.